Welcome to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. It's a final play, and look at the celebrations, look at how much it means to Northumbria. That is full time here at Nottingham, reign supreme. Barry will take it in for the second, love for a touchdown. White will head for the corner, but he won't need to get there, the referee blows the full time whistle. Well, after 28 weeks of competition, it all comes down to the end of the season and everyone wants to finish it with a lovely piece of silverware. And this, of course, is one of the best seats in the house, but you have the second best seat in the house. You are here joining us at Loughborough University Stadium on Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance for the Aldi Women's Championship final between the two purple powers. It's Loughborough University against Durham. This is Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. Charlie, welcome to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. Just how are you feeling right now that your squad have made it this far? Uh, really proud. Um, we said from day one that we wanted to play the last game of the Bucks season, which is obviously the championship final. So we kind of ticked off that objective in terms of getting to the last game of the season. And, and now it's just about putting our best foot forward tonight and, and seeing if we can go all the way and lift the trophy. It's been a difficult league season for this side, but they are a new side trying to find their stride. This would be the best way to finish the season, surely, with a trophy lift. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, uh, a lot of freshers, a lot of players that have never experienced Bucks before. Um, so there was a bit of a kind of acclimatisation period in terms of getting used to the type of football, um, getting used to each other as a new team. But I couldn't be more proud of the group in terms of how they've grown over the course of the season, having very some, some very tough games, some very challenging situations, but we've always managed to overcome those hurdles, which has been really pleasing to see. Talk to me about your opposition today, another purple power in the form of Durham University. They're competitive, just like yourselves, on the National League stage as well. Um, what do you make of their chances against you in this game and how are you going to shut them down? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, for me, Whenever we come into like a knockout stage game, I always have a, a process of it. it's a 50-50 because um, cup football, knockout football is very much that way for me. Um, we've, we've prepped as much as we can. Um, we'll, we'll have a game plan, Dumb will have a game plan. They're, they're very good at what they do. We like to think we're very good at we, what we do. Uh, and hopefully our game plan will come through and, and we'll get the better of the game. Um, and then if not, we'll have to adapt in the moment as is such. Um, and, and just kind of, as I say, give our best and, and sort of work as hard as we can in those moments to get the best performance and hopefully the result. Have you been able to treat this like any other normal week or has there been a special buzz around camp that you've had to control in a way and manage? Yeah, I think, you know, naturally there's always a few people, it's their last sort of books uh, season as, as they kind of are about to graduate. So there's always that special part to it. Um, and again, it's first experience of final for a lot of players in any kind of form of football they've been in. So there's always these first experiences and potentially last experiences for a lot of players. So there's always that um, excitement around that, I like to think, in these weeks. Now, just before I let you get back to the warm-up, um, can you give us any quick updates on the squad itself? Any last-minute changes you've had to make due to injuries or any absences in the squad you want to tell us about? Uh, Zafia's come back in. Um, she had a late fitness test yesterday morning, uh, but she looked really good, so she's come back in. She'll be starting today, which is a, re a real uh, boost to us. Fortunately, Hannah Plum's out of the squad, having picked up an injury in our National League game on Sunday. Um, and she'll be a big loss, but she'll be here with us in spirit for sure. Well, Charlie, go get stuck in, enjoy the game and enjoy the day. Fantastic to hear there from Charlie, the head coach of the Loughborough team. And let's talk a little bit more about the Loughborough form coming into this competition. Their quarterfinal was away at St Andrews. That was a seven-hour coach trip. And they're very happy that they came away with the win as well. And remember, St Andrews are the league champions also. So to dethrone them 
up at their own place is quite a feat to do at the quarterfinal stages. They came away, it was three all after extra time, but four two on penalties they won and they did that seven hour journey home as happy as they have ever been. And the semi-final they faced Northumbria, that was here at home at the Loughborough University Stadium. That was a three one victory. So a confident win for the side going into today's Aldi Women's Championship final, but their visitors, their opposition, Durham University, have also had an equally strong run-in in the competition. In the quarter-final alone, they beat Sterling University 5-0 at home, which was a brilliant win to start off proceedings. And then in the semi-final, they faced Nottingham University. And after extra time, that was a 1-0 victory for the Palatinites. And they're pretty pleased that they came away with a victory then. They'll be hoping for more of the same today. So let's hear from the opposition camp and how they're weighing up this fixture. Chris, welcome to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. How does it feel to be here? Feels great. Long year. Um, buzzing to be here and really looking forward to getting, getting started. I know the girls are as well. What's the atmosphere been like in camp this week? I say it to every coach I've met so far this week. You know, you just play it off as a normal day, a normal week, but surely it's far from it. Yeah, it's what you try to do. It's just treat it like a normal Wednesday coming in and 11 v 11 ultimately. But obviously you have got the excitement, you've got all the all the extras around it and, and obviously the pinnacle is this and this is where every team looks to aim to get to and luckily we've managed to get there ourselves. So speaking of today, can you give us an update on the team itself? Have you had to make any changes forced due to injuries or absences at all in the squad? Uh, no absences, we've got a couple of returns from injury so yeah, it lo looks really good, really positive. Talked about those returning from injury, have they been sort of slowly progressing back in through the training squad? Yeah, our captain Emma Wallace, she's back from uh, long-term injury knee operation uh, just before Christmas so we're welcoming her back into the squad as a phase so she'll hopefully play some part today uh, being a third year what an occasion to finish off but yeah we've got some got some good players coming back in. Speaking of those third years have you got a few that would love to cap off their Durham footballing careers with a win here today? Oh, absolutely I mean whether you're first year second year third year you, you want to go away with that winner's medal but there's probably 16 girls on the other side of the pitch obviously wanting to get that as well so it's, we'll see how it goes. Speaking of those 16 opposition members, uh, give us a quick word on your opposition today. Loughborough University in their home stadium. Uh, how are you feeling about tackling that challenge? Looking forward to it. I think they've played some great stuff this year. Um, I mean, listen, we know the quality of Loughborough, but we know we're not too shy of uh, a bit of quality in our change of room as well. So, yeah, relish to the challenge. On this Aldi Women's Champion. And another person that I'm looking forward to getting the thoughts of is none other than Nikki Russell, Notts County women's football player and sport development officer at Sport England. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you, James. It's a pleasure to be back at Loughborough University Stadium. Well, let's talk a little bit about how it's a pleasure to be back because you are a <laughs> former uh, Loughborough Lightning player, so you know what it's like to be part of this Loughborough squad. You know what it's like to play at this stadium. Can you give us a bit of an insight to this pitch? It's got quite damp over the course of the afternoon and the cold weather that's setting in this evening isn't going to help that dry and the ball is therefore going to run quite fast along it, surely. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a quick pitch. It's always renowned for being quite a big pitch as well, so we'll see some quite expansive football, I'm sure. Um, and it'll be a good test for both teams. But it's a great venue to play at. Um, a very privileged to play at it. What's it like playing at home as well? You can saw a shot of the fans there that have made their way out. They've got some little signs and some purple face paint on too. Uh, does, it, does it mean a lot in finals like this to have home field advantage in a way? Oh, definitely. The girls will know this place inside out. They'll have the fans. They've got the advantage of having even more uh, people coming down to watch. Obviously, Durham will have travelled a lot further. You're going to have a lot less travelling fans, so you will absolutely want to be playing on your home pitch. So, great opportunity for the girls. Well, before we talk a little bit too... Before we talk a little bit too into detail about this fixture, let me just run you through quickly the starting 11 for either side before they come out onto the pitch. So today for Loughborough, starting 11 are as follows. Number one, Grace Tomey. Number two, Emily Bates. Number three, Abby Hatley. Number four, and captain Doris Greenwood. Number six, Hannah Langford. Number seven, Solon Magnon. Number eight, Poppy Wright. Number nine, Elamay Coots. Number 10, Jess Collier. Number 11, Lauren Purchase. And number 17, Sophia Check. And for Durham, lining up as the starting 11, number 13, Anna King in goal. Number two, Alex Gatt. Number four, Talia Boardman. Number five, Erin Brown. Number six, Megan Hughes. Number eight, Faye Dale. Number nine, Neve Doody. Number 10, Erin Nicholson. Number 11, Vicky Newfind. And number 12, Clarissa Jackson with number 14, Becky Lovelace. 
and we can see the replacements now making their way out of the tunnel ahead of this fixture. Uh, Nicky, on occasions like this, what does it mean to be picked by the coach in part of the starting eleven? I think it's absolutely huge. Every player wants to be in that starting eleven and be walking out of the tunnel uh, before the game. So absolutely massive for the girls, but equally great opportunity for those girls that are on the bench, the replacements, uh, to come on and make an impact when they get called up. Well, and speaking of impact, let's listen to the roar that echoes around this brilliant stadium as we welcome our teams onto the pitch. It's the University of Loughborough and Durham University in this Audi Women's Championship final. Durham, of course, forced to play in white. We can't have two purple powers out on the pitch. Just one. And today it's Loughborough sporting the brilliant purple colours, the iconic purple. My apologies, the home side have actually opted to go in white. So it's Luffer who are in the white kit, Durham who are in the uh, Palatinite colours, which they often sport throughout the year. Purple's not good enough for them, uh, Nikki. They have to call it Palatinite. And obviously, every Durham player will be coming for me in the comments section. Uh, but let's talk about how you should start this game. For either side, they want to come rearing out the blocks and catch the opposition off guard, surely. Oh, definitely. You want to try and get out on the front foot. You want to make sure the team feel that you're there, you feel you're, that you're there to play. Um, so definitely both teams want a quick start to the match, make the most of the atmosphere and definitely Loughborough wanting to make the most of that home advantage like we said earlier. Well, we see the teams have gone off to their huddles. The messages are going to start ringing from their captains about how they should attack this game. Vicky, what's your typical message in these huddles at the start of matches? Uh, in the huddle, I mean, it's just about your final words to the team, looking the other teammates in the eye, making sure you're all on the same page. A bit for me, it's all about that getting hyped, getting together, and knowing you know what you're going to go up, put it all on the pitch. So, great opportunity for a last little few words, but it's all about the energy and excitement at this point. Energy and excitement. I mean, it must be so hard to control that adrenaline because you have a fire in your belly. You know, there's a lot riding on this game after all. There's silverware up for grabs. How do you control it? Because, you know, surely you go crazy on the inside, you just want to start playing. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's definitely going to be nerves. There's definitely going to be a lot of excitement. But I think it's about the girls kind of knowing who they're playing alongside. They'll have trained week in, week out with these girls. They'll know what they're there to do. They'll have had all the analysis, all of the technical sessions, tactical sessions. So it's just about putting that out onto the pitch now. So they'll definitely be ready for that. And hopefully won't see too many nerves and just a really good match. Now, in the league season, Loughborough have had a slightly weaker league season than Durham. Durham obviously finishing in the top two, Loughborough finishing down towards the bottom three. Um, but the cup competition is so different to league competition at every level of football here in the UK, and none more so than out here on the university pitches. Oh, definitely. I mean, when you're a student, it was always about Bucks knockouts. That's what you wanted to win. That's what, it, what you wanted to progress in. You wanted to get to Bucks Big Wednesday. So, yeah, league is done and done and dusted. That was the result. Those are the standings. It's all about the cup. And I know uh, Loughborough will be delighted to be here in this cup final. Of course, they'll be delighted. They've got home field advantage, Nicky. I mean, what's better <laughs> than that? Maybe copious amounts of chocolate on Easter Sunday. Maybe, that's, sli maybe that's slightly better. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, let's find out who will still be smiling at the end of this fixture. Quick word on our officiating team as well. We've got our referee is Daniel Squires. In the dugout, we've got Otis Musandiru. And we've got two assistants in David French and Kamani Anderson. A big thank you to those individuals that have given up their time to come and make this game possible because without our amazing officials and our volunteers games like this simply can't happen so a big pat on the back and a round of applause for those four that are involved in making this happen today and we are underway at the Loughborough University Stadium for this Aldi Women's Championship Final it's part of Bucks Big Wednesday powered by New Balance and Durham coming flying out the gates already putting on a high press Trying to get the ball back off Loughborough, and they will do around the Loughborough area. <sighs> Nikki, touch and go starts there for Loughborough. Yeah, they're always going to be a ball playing team looking to play out from the back. You can see them uh, maybe starting slightly slow and allowing Durham to get the press on, but uh, I'm sure we'll see Loughborough continue to try and play from the back and play their football through this game. Well, the Durham press serving pretty much as a wake up call, I guess, for Loughborough. That's a lovely ball forwards from Lauren Purchase. Looks as though Solon Magnon has managed to get herself on the ball in a bit of space and with the cross in towards goal. 
Alana King deals with that pretty easily. Yeah, you can see both teams trying to make the most of the, the pitch size already with a big switch of play out to the right-hand side. So great start from Loughborough to get a first cross into the box, but uh, no one in there uh, that time to try and get on the end of it. Really calm work, though, there from uh, Anna King to just step up, step forward, take the ball in two hands. She'll play that downfield now for her Durham side. That's what you want from your goalkeeper. Get the ball in hand, calm it down, and then build from the back. We really underplay the effectiveness that the keeper's distribution has on the whole game, really, don't we? Definitely. It sets the tone. It allows you to build out from the back. It allows you to get, get higher up the pitch, make a quick transition if you want to. Um, yeah, goalkeepers are absolutely vital, and they'll manage a lot of the tempo during the game. Alex Gap playing it forward now for Durham. Though it looks as though Emily Bates might boot it far down the pitch. She's just tapped that one into touch. Smart play from the Loughborough defender. That's a slight error at the throw for Durham. Neve Doody sending that one into touch, but it gives Loughborough a chance to get back onto the ball. And in games like this, Nikki, if you can dominate possession in the early stages, it gives you a bit of uh, a bit of momentum and a bit of confidence for the rest of the 90. Yeah, definitely. In those in those early stages of the game, you want to try and get on the ball, get as much confidence, get every player a touch, because that will help everyone feel a little bit better. Get, get a feel for the, the surface, get a feel for the opposition. So definitely lots of possession is what you want in these first first few minutes. Well, that's Gat is back on the ball there for Durham, looking to play that down the field to Newfine. The Newfine's cross couldn't find a Palatinate player. I love to put in a really good big clearance kick. It's gone all the way back as far as Clarissa Jackson here. The Durham defender giving it nicely back to Anna King in goal. Here, the luck of fans already starting to give Anna King a hard time. Uh, <laughs> Nikki, that's not going to go away throughout this entire fixture, is it? No, definitely not. A lot of probably hoping that the fans can uh, get in the ear of the goalkeeper, give her a bit of a tough, tough evening. Um, you definitely want to see that from your home fans. Well, Purchase making a dangerous run there. She managed to play that infield to the rest of her team. Here is Lauren Purchase once more on the ball. Still alive here for Lufra. They've got a chance. Hatley now laying that off. To Doris Green with the captain who sends it in. Durham have managed to get in the way of that cross. Durham might break here on a counter actually if they've got the pace. They have indeed to secure the ball. And that's Faye Dale looking to see who's with her in support. And a foul going in on Neve Doody just outside of the Loughborough area gives Durham a very promising position to attack from. Yeah, I think it's a difficult one. Obviously, Loughborough had a good chance. You saw Doris and Abby combining on the left-hand side. Doris did a great job to make the recovery, but unfortunately gave away the foul uh, just on the edge of the area. Well, we've got Vicky Newfine standing over the ball to take this free kick. And the Durham number 11 has got some friends in the box if she wants to use them. Probably a bit too far out to go for a straight attempt on goal. Here we go. Newfine did indeed go for an attempt herself, but the ball blocked it. That's a long range effort from very far out by Aaron Brown. And the Durham captain concedes a goal kick. I think you always want to try and get a, a shot on goal early doors, but unfortunately I don't think that's quite what she was looking for from the free kick or the follow up. You can't score in a game if you don't take shots on goal. So you've got to praise them <laughs> for, try, for trying anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's a lovely ball forward down the field, potentially going to find Lauren Purchase for Loughborough in a fierce battle with Clarissa Jackson. And Purchase has indeed won the ball for Loughborough, sending the cross in. It's going out wide towards the edge of the area, but it's been dealt with well. Chance still alive for Loughborough here, bouncing off everyone like a pinball machine. And Loughborough have intercepted again. Pressing hard to try and get something out of this attacking opportunity, but Durham have snuffed it out and they'll break away themselves. Yeah, there's a great sliding block in there from Erin Nicholson, it looked like, on the edge of the area. Very important to get that block in so the shot couldn't come off on the edge of the 18. It's going right to the back here for Loughborough. Abby Hatley already showing how she's not afraid to march up the park herself with a dribble or indeed become the playmaker that Loughborough need. And that's a beautiful ball forward for Loughborough to work with. There's another lovely cross to go with it too. But Durham have defended well with Megan Hughes.
So this will be a corner kick for Loughborough. The first few set pieces in every match are always uh, difficult ones, really, Nikki. Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, these teams have played each other twice so far this season, so they might have a bit of an idea of how the set pieces are going to set up, but you definitely want to try and put it in the mixer, uh, make a good contact and try and put the goalkeeper under a bit of pressure. Ball in from the corner for Loughborough, heading towards that near post, but Durham have sent that away. Loughborough somehow managed to regain possession. Lovely bit of passing play from the home side and there's the offside flag which is a shame because it was a brilliant cross but of course it doesn't matter the resulting goal won't count due to the earlier offside call yeah fortunately no VAR I don't believe tonight so uh, can't check that one um, it was a really good play down the right hand side from Loughborough um, but I'm sure there'll be more opportunities as the game goes on well let's take a look at the replay of it again for you so you can watch uh, the players themselves were they offside? Oh, it's the ball gone backwards, so therefore they're not offside. That would be my debate. Not, not, not done a lot of refereeing in my time, but uh, I'd probably question that one if I was Loughborough. But I'm not sure we can have you as a self-appointed TMO being Loughborough alumni calling on a Loughborough <laughs> decision, Nikki. But, you know, anything's possible in finals these um, days. Might be some bias there, but... Uh <laughs> there was a free kick awarded against Loughborough there, so once again, Anna King is going to step up, be the distributor that... Durham desire from the back. I always find that interesting when players step up to the mark and the referee leaves them there and then they'll throw the ball another five metres forward, Nicky. That's a cheeky tactic. Yeah, you always see a bit of that in football. You see the ball try and take a few steps forward. You'll always see, uh, I always find defenders particularly always try and add a few extra yards to some free kicks. gone all the way back to Grace Tolmy in goal. Best touch that the Loughborough keeper has had in open play. And Nicky, you've said it already that Loughborough are a team that are happy to play out from the back, but on occasions like that when you can't find a way through and you have to force it back to your keeper again, it doesn't really show promising signs for the rest of the game. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's often when you're trying to play out from the back, it's not going to work every time. But you, you'll see Loughborough try and stick to that principle because they know it can work. And when they do break that first line, they're in with a really good opportunity, particularly re releasing Doris Greenwood in centre midfield. So they'll continue to try to do it, but it is quite a high-risk tactic, um, especially when there's nerves associated with the cup final. Free kick awarded for Loughborough. Just alleviating a little bit of pressure at the back there. Can't use the nickname of the African Violet as they are in their white strip. <laughs> but they're playing out the back for us now. And that's a lovely little turn and go there from Lauren Purchase. She's been on fire from the get-go, really, for the Loughborough side. And that beautiful ball forward along the floor to Anna King. Had to come flying off the line to deal with it, Nikki. Yeah, you can see what Loughborough are trying to do from playing out there. You had Abby Haightley, who's probably the, the left back in this formation, going inside, creating the space for Lauren Purchase to receive the ball higher up the pitch. And uh, it definitely worked for them there, where Lauren was able to try and play the ball through. Well, Becky Lovelace wasn't able to control that in play for Durham. So Loughborough get us restarted again. Durham have somehow won possession and they'll attack forward now with Neufein. She took a shot on goal actually there as well. You've got to commend the Durham number 11 for having a chance, but it was blocked quite easily. Yeah, Faye Dale did really well there to, to kind of get the ball out and, and into the feet of her teammate, but uh, it was quite a, a long way out to be taking a strike. I don't know if she thought she had any other options, but uh, or just trying to get some of those shots off, like we said, early on in the game. Once again, Loughborough happy to try and play out from the back. Well, Durham have clearly done their homework here. They're pressing nice and high. They're keeping the energy high. But I guess the question is, how long can you keep it up for? Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's a high energy to try and keep a press going. So it depends. It will see if they're doing it for the first 10 minutes or if it's something they want to sustain throughout the game. But definitely uh, can be tiring on the legs. Well, Lauren Perch has done fantastically well to keep that in play for Loughborough and indeed fend off the two Durham defenders. And the cross is going to go in, but there's no one there at the back post to get on the end of Abby Haightley's ball. Yeah, I think it was uh, well played down the left-hand side by Lauren. She found 
Abby, who will often be either overlapping her or, or the option underneath. But yeah, no, no one really getting into that box and trying to get across in front of the goalkeeper there. Well, we're beyond the opening 10 minutes now. Uh, Nikki, give me your first impressions of how this game is playing out right now. I think it's been a little, you maybe argue, maybe Loughborough have made it into the final third a few extra times. I say that as, as Durham have now uh, moved the ball forward. You see Durham are trying to press, Loughborough trying to play it out. So you've got two footballing sides. So I think it's going to be a, an exciting rest of the match. Oh, that's a lovely ball forward there from Poppy Wright. She's found her striker in LMA Coots. Coots has a round King, but King stood her ground and made herself big. That's fantastic keeping from the goalkeeper. Yeah, what a chance that was. It seemed just to slightly get away from her, gave her extra yards to the goalkeeper to be able to get, get out and get that ball there. Well, Durham will have been shocked there ever so slightly by the big chance that Loughborough suddenly had. So there's their wake-up call, both sides having had one in this game now. So we're all even with wake-up calls. <laughs> That's a lovely bit of play from Loughborough to keep going to the referee's whistle and Jess Collier has sent it out wide to Magnon. And Magnon's cross did look dangerous. And there's a slip up there from Becky Lovelace of Durham as well. Yeah, and Loughborough needs to keep this ball. This is a big chance. That's a foul from Lovelace of Lauren Purchase. And I guess Lovelace has to put something like that in because Purchase is a player you don't want to give any space to. Yeah, definitely. She can be really direct. She doesn't mind running at you and they'll put a really good ball into the box. She's scored quite a few goals um, this year, both uh, in the Lightning team and also for the Bucks team as well. It's no surprise to hear that Lauren Purchase has got 19 youth international caps for Wales, despite being born in Scotland. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> and for now, the story of the match is Loughborough have a free kick out on this near side. It's dealt with pretty easily by Durham. They could break here on a counter. But they choose not to rush things. But that's a bit of a wayward pass from Aaron Nicholson. And Loughborough back in possession. Yeah, it seems like Durham are just struggling a little bit in terms of trying to complete passes in, in Loughborough's half. Um, again, like you said, a bit conservative in, in coming out with the ball there. But uh, might be a, a tactic, might be looking just to build slowly from the back and break Loughborough down that way. LMA Coots did really well there to win the foot race, but then the referee wasn't impressed with how aggressively the physicality was used, I should say. You can see her chasing down the ball. She just gives a, a gentle, polite hello shove in a way to uh, Alex Gatt. You've scrunched your face up though, Nikki. I don't think you agree with that decision. I'd say that was a little bit soft, but as a striker, I'm always going to be back in the number nine. We saw some theatrics earlier in the men's championship final, so... Let's hope we can stamp those out of this women's final too. And he felt that ball should have gone earlier, really, to Doris Greenwood. Greenwood held her run because she knew she'd be offside. Um, but really exciting stuff from Loughborough so far. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, they're getting a lot more of the ball in that final third and progressing well up the pitch. Looking for those three balls, trying to get in behind Durham, given the size of the pitch, as we mentioned earlier. So, yeah, Loughborough will feel quite confident with this start. King trying to play it out from the back to Nicholson. And she's been dispossessed by Greenwood. I think Greenwood started really well, breaking up the play centrally and also being quite key in the build there. Durham also seemingly happy to just bide their time, really trying to play it out from the back, Nikki. Uh, when you've got two sides who have such similar philosophies in football, does it often make for a, a close match? Yeah, definitely. I think you, when you have two teams like Durham and Loughborough, they're both going to try the same things. So it's going to be interesting to see which one edges it, really, because uh, if they try the same techniques, um, who's going to pull it off better on the day or, or be who wins this game? Well, we're going to have a th another throw in exactly the same position as we've just experienced one, really, Nicky. Durham aren't giving Loughborough any ins. It's it's only very minor slip-ups that all of a sudden they seem to find themselves breaking through that platinite defensive wall. Yeah, Durham are trying to be really tight at the back and make sure they're hard to break down. Uh, two midfielders trying to be quite combative in the middle, so they'll definitely be trying to disrupt Loughborough, not allow them those three balls that we've seen or, or make sure they're over-hit or, or delivered under pressure at the very least. 
Ella May Coots won that ball nicely for Loughborough, but Durham have fought for it back. And here comes Newfiend down that far side. Lovely bit of footwork there from the Durham 11, but she is dispossessed. It's still worked out here for Durham. Talia Borman was coming forward for the Palace tonight. Lovelace is providing some good width on the right-hand side if they, if they find her, but uh, they're slowing it down a little bit, Durham here. They're just biding their time at the moment. Don't want to rush anything. But we know that they are an attacking force to be reckoned with. I mean, their form going into this cup final speaks for itself in that sense. I mean, they defeated Sterling 5-0 at home. And 5-0 in any competition at any level, Nikki, uh, really speaks volumes of your, of your team. Oh, definitely. I mean, defenders will be shouting about the clean sheet, but uh, the forwards will definitely be talking about that five goals they put past the team. So, uh, yeah, really impressive that, that teams are able to win by those margins. Brown sends this one down the pitch. And that's a nice little defensive head from Abby Haightley. I think both captains for both sides have started off really well in the game. Definitely trying to set the set the tone for their teams. How important is it to have a captain that not only can keep their head and keep composed in these big finals, but also can steer the ship in attack and defence? Yeah, I think it's really important. You do look to your captain in terms of, Matt like said, managing that tempo, um, supporting the team, making the right decisions. Again, sometimes it's slowing it down, sometimes it's moving the ball quickly. Not all captains are going to be the most vocal, so a lot of them will just uh, show it in how they play. Um, and we're definitely seeing that from both captains tonight already. Really good clearance there from Poppy Wright for Loughborough. And chasing it down really fiercely is uh, Bates. Bates still chasing it down. She's encouraged her fellow Loughborough side to join in with that, but it's now out with Lovelace for Durham. Lovely little back heel there for Lovelace to get onto from Doody. Goes out for another throw. I think Nikki actually, we should just take a moment to appreciate sometimes how hard a throwing can be to restart a game because you often stand at the side looking for someone to throw the ball to and you haven't got a single option in front of you because they're all marked. Yeah, I think throw-ins are actually a bit of a undiscovered art or, or something not all teams maybe spend the time on. It's a, it's a real common restart of the ball and it's a good opportunity to get the team forward. But like I said, if you don't have the options, they can be your undoing and you can overturn um, the ball. Well, it's out with Lovelace now on this near side to us for Durham. Lovelace getting around the defensive effort of Lauren Purchase. Cross goes in, it was low, it wasn't very hard. So it's an easy clearance for Loughborough, but it's not gone out their own half. Nicholson. Good work there from the Durham 10 under pressure, it must be said, Nicky. Yeah, it's good to see Durham sustaining uh, this attack. Very composed there from the number 10. Oh, and Loughborough might break with it now. And Emily Bates. That's a big That's tackle time. going in there from Alex Cat. That's a crucial intervention from the Durham player. Yeah, definitely. A team will be grateful for making that challenge. Definitely needed. But at the moment between these two sides, Nicky, we've seen Loughborough in possession now, but they've been in possession more than Durham, it must be said, in this first half. Is that encouraging signs for the home side, or do they not need to get ahead of themselves just yet? Well, I don't think either team will be getting ahead of themselves too early on in this game, but again, you, you want to get some possession, you want to get, get on the ball, get comfortable, so I think they'll definitely take confidence from that, but I think Durham have, have improved in the last kind of 10 minutes um, and started to get more on the ball, breaking up Loughborough's play a little bit more, so it'll be exciting to see where the rest of the half goes. Only a bit of tippy-tap football going on here from Loughborough, it's fantastic to see. But in that moment, it disappears from their feet. And Neufien is out on the far side and somehow keeps possession for Durham as well. It's really a standout player so far in this first half. Yeah, I think it's, it, there's been a, a lot of good performances so far. I think 
you've got some great work down both attacking sides, um, but I think in the middle again particularly, those players breaking up play, setting up play have been really, really important. Wonder how, how much the fans are, are saying to the players down that far side from where we're stood. That comes into the, uh, the, the home advantage <laughs> equation, doesn't it, really? Having every single fan that lines the pitch in favour of you, it must get in the head of the opposition quite quickly. Yeah, I think Durham will be quite used to it. I know a few of these girls have played at various different levels, so they'll be used to not necessarily having the support of the crowd with them, but um, definitely something Loughborough will be enjoying, no doubt. I was about to say that the crowd was saying it for me there, Nikki. A big handball <laughs> moment from the captain, Erin Brown. Yeah, sometimes you can't help those. Uh, it just bounces up, but puts Loughborough in a, in, in a nice position here. A little bit far out, so I'd probably expect to kind of cross or ball into the box from here, but you never know. Dorin well, were trying a, it from far out earlier. Here's a replay of that exact moment. It's got to be said, it's a grey area really in football, how you judge those handballs, but the arm was clearly not down by her side, but yeah. raised ever so slightly. Yeah, I think she, she'll know a little bit what she was doing there, potentially. She didn't have too many complaints. Oh, Loughborough went with a shot on goal and it might have got away from everyone. How is the referee going to award it offside? Yeah, Just as we thought, Loughborough might have taken the lead and they are protesting with the officials as well. They don't understand the decision. Nikki, can you talk me through the reasoning potentially for the official decision? Yeah, I mean, we, we need our VAR back, but it looked like it was an offside decision on that one. It seemed like the ball evaded everyone, so I'll be interested to see if it takes a touch. So it was an amazing ball from Abby Haitley. No one touched it. It bounced over the keeper and surely into the net. Yeah, it looked like Hannah Langford might have strayed, got a little bit early, might have been offside, and they might have judged that she'd interfered with the ball. Although she didn't touch it, might have done enough just to interfere with the ball or, or block Anna King from being able to come and collect it. So I'm, I'm assuming I've not got a mic to the officials, but I think that's probably what they would have decided on that one. We've got another handball call against Durham and their number eight, Faye Dale. That's why Loughborough are back in possession with a free kick. So they're going to come out on the back with the ball at their feet. And Durham might start to feel a little bit worried, Nikki, after another big chance. And really, what many will have seen as a clear goal. Yeah, they've had two let-offs now with offside decisions uh, helping them out when the ball's, ball's been in the back of the net twice. So again, Loughborough are going to take a lot of confidence from that and something Durham needs to be aware of. Obviously, keeping quite a good defensive line at the moment. But uh, as legs maybe get tired as we move through the game, that might change. So they've definitely had a few warnings. That touch was a bit too heavy from Doris Greenwood, but her side have worked really well to keep the ball. And Ella May Coots sends this one in towards Jess Collier. It's going to go out as well to Lauren Purchase. Purchase could put a dangerous cross in, but it's blocked by the combined effort of Lovelace and Clarissa Jackson. And it's out for another, another Loughborough corner, Nikki. Yeah, we've mentioned Doris Greenwood a couple of times. That's a lovely little ball just to split the full back in the centre half there to put Lauren through. So, uh, yeah, Loughborough definitely piling on the pressure now. Well, the ball's about to come in from the corner for Loughborough. It's up in the air, heading towards the near post, causing the keeper, King, a little bit of trouble. A bit like it was her own player that might have got in front of her there and stopped her being able to collect it. Well, and it was a nice calm moment there from Abby Haightley. She just told her side to calm down, watch the ball out. No panicking, no pressure. Because Loughborough had the throw, and here comes Purchase, fouled inside the area. Big call to the referee to let that one go, Nikki. Yeah, big call there. I don't know, I didn't see too many complaints from, from the Loughborough players, but uh, you definitely want to be careful if you're making a challenge in the box, especially against Lauren Purchase. <laughs> You've seen a fan get so excited on the far side, they almost toppled over the hoarding separating <laughs> them from the pitch at the moment. Uh, but that's a great illustration of uh, just how much this occasion means not only the players on the pitch, but the student body supporting them off it. Oh, definitely. You'll see lots of players from across the women's football clubs coming down to support, lots of friends of the students. It means a lot. Like everyone uh, at their university, I'm sure, wears the badge with pride, so they'll definitely be enjoying the occasion. This is a replay of the challenge on Lauren Purchase. It was her feet that were taken away from them, but the argument is that Erin Brown did win the ball. Yeah, she definitely got clean contact on the ball first. Did she then make a follow-up contact on Purchase? Probably, but um, I didn't look like Lauren made too many appeals, and I'll trust her on this one. We'll trust her. That's yeah. a good way to go. <laughs> we'll trust her and her judgment. Here come Loughborough. Haitley once more looks downfield. Lauren 
Kirk just does well to keep that one in play, but intercepted by Nicholson, who seems to be all over this pitch at the moment for Durham. Yeah, she's done really well to break it up there. You can see Loughborough get a lot of bodies central on the pitch. So even when they lost it then, you can see Collier really trying to hunt it down, try and get pressure on those Durham players, but they did well initially to play it out. Well, Durham have been able to disrupt Loughborough's latest surge towards their own goal. And Alex Gatt is always in the right place at the right time for those moments. Yeah, really well defended. That's what you want your fullback to do. Um, play it off the striker or the forward that's pressing and, and get the goal kick so they can reset here from Anna King. I'll tell you what, though, if I was an attacker against Alex Gatt, I wouldn't want to mess with her. She's got a black belt in karate, Nikki. So uh, don't get on her wrong side or indeed to try and take the ball off her. <laughs> yeah, it um, uh, be interesting if she pulls out any of those moves in this game, but uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't do it on the wrong side of, of her. Sends this one on to Faye Dale. Lovely snap flex for Durham. Crucial, crucial block there from Hannah Langford because Lovely saw the space that was in front of her and saw a, a body of Durham players waiting to receive the ball. Yeah, you're going to definitely, hope, as we go through the game, there's going to be more gaps that open up for Durham in particular. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they try and capitalise on that. Sophia check from the back look long downfield, but it's not going to work out on that occasion for the fresher. But Loughborough winning a crucial throwing decision on that far side because it's in front of their fans and it takes away from Durham as well. Yeah, definitely. You can hear the fans enjoy that one. Uh, don't want to be the player that loses the ball just there, unfortunately, but it, it's happened to us all. Well, we're approaching the half hour mark in this fixture. We're still goalless here in the Aldi Women's Championship final, a part of Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance here at Loughborough University. And here in the Loughborough University Stadium, it is nil nil between Loughborough University and Durham University. See, Durham have uh, dropped off slightly there, so Loughborough centre halves had more time on the ball. So they, I know they're pressing high to start with, but looks like they might have dropped into a, a mid block as we move into the second part of this first half. Is that a shift in tactics or is that a worry about fitness they can't keep the pressing up for the full 90? I think it could be tactical. I know uh, quite a few sides I've played for, we go out and say let's press for the first 10 minutes, see what the team are about um, and then drop in and be hard to beat uh, following that. So it could definitely be a tactical thing. Uh, I think Durham probably looking to try and win the ball back and, and be harder to break down. Loughborough have had a few through balls. So again, want to be hard to beat so that uh, mid block just enables them to do that and be a little bit tighter. I won't start singing along with the crowd with the chance. No, no, no. I was, I was going to say, please don't hold back. You know, we're back at your old stomping ground after all. So if you do feel yourself need to join in with the chanting, by all means. Uh, you'll have to teach me the words, though, because I do not know the Loughborough versions. We can go over that at half time. I'll get you on side. <laughs> well, here come Loughborough out from the back now. It's encouraging to see that they've got the confidence, actually, Lafra. As we see an amazing bit of play there from Poppy right in the middle. Great to see they've got the confidence that when there is nothing on, they have the ability to just go back home, as they say in football. Yeah, definitely. They've been really patient in the build now. Hately. Plays that back to Langford. Langford looking for check. Is that a foul on Poppy Wright in the middle by Erin Nicholson? I think it's a tough one. I mean, I thought it looked a little bit soft, but I don't know if she got an elbow in the back. It can be quite sore, so she's back on her feet now, so that's what matters. She's looking to run that off quite quickly. That was a threatening cross for Durham, but there was no one in that box to actually take advantage of it. And there is a foul on Poppy Wright, this time conceded by Nikki, Vicky Neufein. Yeah, no arguments on that one. No, no arguments with that one. <laughs> Very deadpan from you there, Nicky. <laughs> Anything advantage left for, I guess you're going to approach you with that manner. <laughs> well, we had a goalless first half in the men's championship final, which was the curtain raiser really to this grand women's championship final here at the Loughborough University Stadium. 
how important is it actually for sides to get a goal in the first half? Not so that they can go into halftime relaxed in any sense, but go into halftime with a bit of confidence that their plan works, that the strategy that they're on the path of is going to pay off. Oh, definitely. I mean, every team, particularly in the cup final, wants to, to get off the mark first, get that first goal. And if you can do it in the first half, it just enables you to kind of reset, look at your tactics um, and hear from the coaching staff in terms of an approach for, for the second half. So it definitely opens up more options for you. So both teams would love to get a goal in the first half, I'm sure. Even though Loughborough have had it in the back of the neck twice, that offside flag has saved Durham. <laughs> you won't let us forget it if no. there's one goal in it at the end. <laughs> you won't let it go. Mind you, I wouldn't either. Here come Durham. Also a team happy to play out right from the back. But Aaron Brown sends this into the air. That's an easy interception for Loughborough to deal with. But Aaron Nicholson pounced on the ball. Huge challenge from the number 10 and it's ended up in a Lepra throw. Yeah, big challenge in there. Her team will, will be wanting to see that from their, their midfielders, so they won't mind. But those are the sort of moments that you need in cup finals like this. You need home moments of not only aggression, but also just pace and a high tempo moment, something to really inject enthusiasm into your team. Yeah, definitely, like a challenge, a good pass, a bit of energy, a bit of explosion. Yeah, if you want to see it, it gets the, gets the team up, gets them uh, energetic for the for the final, so definitely the team will want to see that. Well, how about that pass from Purchase to Magnon? It's back with Loughborough now up right on the Durham penalty area. Check now. Still coming forward, but Loughborough dispossessed, and Jess Collier loses possession for that home side, and Durham can attack out from the back once more. Yeah, see Loughborough trying to be patient again. It was a good ball through, but wasn't on at the time to, to go into the box, so he came back round. Haven't seen many shots from, from the edge of the area. You can see kind of Doris has picked up a few times at the edge of the D, so it'd be interesting to see as the game goes on. They try and uh, challenge Anna King from outside the area. Good control by Lovelace under pressure there. And now Loughborough have it again at the back. It feels as though that's exactly what this game is missing right now, um, Nicky. Just a, a, a goal, a big moment, a big win for one of these sides on the field. Whether that comes as a goal or not is up to them. But just something to inject a bit of life into one of these sides to really grab the game by the throat. Yeah, definitely. I think after the earlier chances and free kicks, it's settled down a little bit. There's not been much excitement over the last kind of seven or eight minutes. So definitely love to see kind of some more chances, some big challenges. Or a, or a goal to liven up the fixture as well. And that was a searching kick down the field from Anna Langford. Looking, of course, for Jess Collier. There's more chance start to ring out around the Loughborough University Stadium. And this really is a special place to come and play football, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely venue. Um, it's a great pitch. It's a hybrid pitch, so a mixture of artificial and grass. Oh, that's a lovely bit of play there from LMA Coons. We thought that she might take full advantage of that moment where there was a mistake in the backfield by Durham, but now it's Durham's chance to counter, and they will with Neufeind. But that is a crucial tackle from Czech. Full bravery and full send from Sophia. Yeah, that's a great challenge. We've seen Nilfine try and get on the ball. She likes to, seems to like to run with the, that ball and did really well there, but maybe it's just one player too many on that occasion. Could that have been the moment to inject the pace back into this game? But Anna King is well off her line there. But she's shepherding that ball back into her area. That was... Uh, Brief stuff from the uh, Durham keeper. Um, do you think she'll continue that throughout the uh, fixture? Yeah, she's obviously feeling confident. Like we said earlier, it's going to be a fast surface. So she's feeling confident with those three balls from Loughborough that, that she can beat the players there and is confident to play off a line. So it worked well there. So I'm sure she'll keep trying to do it. Oh, once again, she's watched that ball roll out of play. And it's going to be a goal kick with her now. Ten minutes left in this first half. Uh, Nikki, put yourself in the shoes of either coach down on side, starting with Durham, uh, what would you be shouting on from the sidelines? What would your message be? 
I think it's definitely Shrabi Calm in possession. You've seen a few times when they have controlled it, they, they've bopped it around quite nicely. So, But a couple of other times, they've maybe tried to be too quick in the transition, too quick to try and get it forward. So definitely to try and be calm in possession. Great touch by the nine there. Really good work from Durham. But another intervention from Czech. But Neu finds back on the ball. Fancy footwork from the Durham 11, but it's uh, another heavy touch that's got away from her. That's a big tackle going in from Talia Boardman. And the lucky player has stayed down, so we are going to take a minute to stop here to check that the player is OK. Uh, and speaking of Lucra, put yourself in the shoes of Coach Charlie there on the sidelines. Uh, what should the orders be, Bart Tom? I think Charlie will be pretty happy. I think that they've played well. They've, they've played around the back really well. Um, I think they've had their chances. They've got into the final third quite a few times. So, again, I think he'll just be reiterating, make sure they're moving the ball quickly in that final third. If it's being recycled back round, do it quickly. And then can they try and find balls into the box and get players on the end of them? Well, I hope it's nothing too serious. I never enjoy seeing people go down whilst playing sport for any prolonged period of time. And we obviously send the injured player down on the floor all all our best wishes. It's a difficult one when all of a sudden you have a long injury stoppage because it, it almost completely kills the game in a way and you have to find that momentum again and re-establish your team in the fixture, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I think when you when you see these long stoppages, you can see both teams getting some tactical information from the coaches, getting some water on board. There wasn't too much momentum for either team in particular, so it'll be interesting to see how when the game does restart in the last kind of eight or so minutes of this half, uh, the teams do come out. It's an opportunity, like I said, get our information on. Will they change anything for the last eight minutes and try and uh, get a goal before half time? Well, I spoke to Coach Charlie before the match. He seemed very quiet, very calm, very composed. I'd almost love him to read an audio book for me, really, <laughs> uh, in the evenings. But he's very animated there on the sidelines, giving the orders. Um, he's obviously not in our camera view right now, but he's just in front of us in commentary, so it's very hard to ignore him. But that isn't a sight that I want to see. That looks like a, a really serious shoulder injury. Yeah, you never want to see a player needing to go off injured, so uh, absolutely gutted uh, for her. Hopefully she's all right. But, uh, got in, in great hands with Ashney, the physio. I've been fortunate to have worked with Ashley previously, so uh, yeah, she's in great hands. So well, hopefully special shout-out to Ashley the physio then. Thank you for looking <laughs> after Nikki during her playing days here, and indeed everyone at Loughborough University and in this side. Just trying to look down at the fourth official's board because they are going to make a substitution. Is Jess Collier coming off? Number 10 for Loughborough is the number on the board from the fourth official. And we are going to see the introduction. It's not Jess coming off. He's got, he's got the wrong number on his board. He there. has Jess, got the wrong Jess number because I've just there. seen Jess still on the pitch. <laughs> It's definitely not number 10 that's come off. The fourth official hasn't changed his board yet, but I'm sure that will come in just a moment. And we are going to see the introduction of first year and fresher Zinia Delglin, sport coaching and PE student. Adding in her expertise though, being an ex Ipswich player. And confirmation it is, unfortunately, the departure of Emily Bates, a fellow fresher and Ipswich supporter. So that's actually quite quite nice that an uh, exit switch player is uh, coming on. But we really do send our best wishes to Emily Bates. You never see, never like to see people go off like that. And it looks as if she's clutching her shoulder or her collar, collarbone. Both of those are, are not nice things to injure. No, definitely not. You want to be enjoying the fixture. You want to be part of a part of the team. She was fortunate to be in the starting eleven and seemed to be playing well, well down the right hand side. So uh, absolutely gutted for her, but. Hopefully uh, she'll, she'll get a bit of pain relief on and still be able to cheer on the team from the sidelines. Fingers and toes crossed. And there's no better pain reliever than lifting a trophy high into the air. Oh, definitely. Having a box gold round the neck, I'm sure, will make her feel a little bit better. 
Can't box that feeling up and sell it in the pharmacist. <laughs> you never know, sometimes players can kind of go, well, want to play even better for our teammate uh, who's just gone off, so might give Loughborough a bit of a extra uh, excitement or energy on the pitch. But it seems like a slight tactical change as well. Uh, a few players who've rotated round, so we'll see how they set up now. Here they come now with Langford, who's was looking downfield. She chose not to take the aerial option. That was a bit of a hair-raising moment for Poppy Wright coming under pressure from Neve Doody. Yeah, you can see the energy's lifted slightly there from Durham with Neve putting a bit of pressure on. So I don't know if they've decided to press. Maybe that's what they were discussing after the success that they had in the first 10 minutes of the press. That's a lovely switch-up of the play from Doris Green with the captain for Loughborough. Sending it out onto that far side, and that pass was a bit too heavy for Poppy Wright to control, and it's made its way all the way back to Anna King. Just looking down at the official on the sideline, he's getting ready to signal the additional minutes that we will play out at the end of this half. Yeah, it's interesting here, Durham obviously starting by playing out, but Anna's instructed the team to get up the field, so looking to try and gain a bit of territory here and, and put a bit of pressure on Loughborough as we move into the final few minutes this half. That's a really nice bit of play there from uh, Neve Doody, but that's even nicer for Loughborough from Jess Collier, and she looks to try and play it onto Ella May Coots, and it got away from the number nine, and all Clarissa Jackson can do, tracking back in defence, is put that one into touch because she knew the Loughborough nine was breathing down her neck. Yeah, it looked like Ella May just pause there to try and get before she tries to get the end of the through ball. I don't know if she thought she was offside or would make it, but applied good pressure in the end. That's a hopeful shot from Lauren Purchase. That's the first one that we've seen go in for a while now in this game. And like I said from the get-go, it's important to get those in because you can't score anything if you don't take a shot. Well, it's the age-old saying. But yeah, she did well to get shot off, but I think she would have uh, hoped to maybe do better, make a better contact with the ball there. It was quite an easy one. Um, for Anna to collect a goal. Well, I'm hearing from the sidelines by my very reliable source that there will be two additional minutes of added on time. But we've still got a couple left to play before we get to that moment. And Loughborough at the field position to work with. Big slip there though from Doris Greenwood. Well, that's a lovely moment for Shania Robber. Winning the ball first side right in front of the home fans is a, is a big moment. Yeah, nice to get a little cheer for that. signal from the fourth official on the touchline two additional minutes of added on time we've reached the 45 minute mark on the referee's watch and that means there's two minutes left for either one of these sides to make a statement Nikki going into half time oh definitely but either side would love to score in these uh, added on minutes Neve Dooney was in a great position there for the three ball but didn't quite make it to her but probably one of the first times we've seen the Luffer back line looking a little bit disjointed one centre half had stepped back and a little bit of space there between the lines. So, Darren will definitely try to capitalise on that. Well, I mean, with 5 0 score lines following Durham to this final, Loughborough should be pretty pleased they've been able to hold them to 0 0 at half time. Yeah, definitely. When you see a team really confident um, going forward and scoring a lot of goals, you definitely want to try and shut them out um, for as long as possible. And uh, Loughborough have done a good job doing that. Aaron Brown is. Doing really well at the back there for Durham as well, it must be said. She's the force that means that Durham have ended up in possession so much. And that's a lovely play forward from Doody on the floor to Lovelace. However, she can't control it on this near side. And it's gone out for another left with throw. That's
that's quite a clear and obvious foul right in front of the referee to uh, concede. Sometimes players like to be a bit subtle, Nicky, but uh, that one was telegraphed, I think. Yeah, slightly. I think that was a, a cynical foul by Durham's number four, but uh, definitely didn't want to let Loughborough make a quick counter. So her team will probably appreciate that. Well, here come Loughborough now. What can they do in these closing moments of the first half? Well, they can put themselves in a dangerous situation. And Anna King really had to come off her line confidently there and claim the ball for Durham. Is that the moment that we needed before half time to give Lepra something to be excited about? I think it would have been nice to see her get on the end of it and uh, give Anna something to think about in goal. So uh, she did well coming off her line. Um, it was a nice, nice through ball, just slightly over hit again, far surface. So. Hard to judge those, but hopefully we'll see a few more of those in the second half. Another slide in from Erin Nicholson. She, she seems to love sliding along the floor to challenge <laughs> for that ball. And long may it continue, because uh, strong tackles make for a good game. Yeah, definitely. You can see the ref there, considering playing the advantage, but uh, he's pulled it back for the free kick. It's always good to have an official that wants to keep the game flowing and moving and doesn't want to blow up at every single potential foul opportunity. Yeah, definitely. You want to see the game keeping to move and some teams really make the most of advantage when they get it so uh, it's well played by the referee Brown sends this one in for Durham it's heading towards Erin Nicholson and it was also with Neufeind it might still work out here for Durham and Doody but Loughborough have been able to get a hold of it with Langford. Offside. And there's a call in favour of Loughborough. Offside from this assistant referee on the near side. A bit of a hair raising moment still, though, for uh, Loughborough, despite the call going their way from the officials. Yeah, definitely. It's always a bit nervy when the ball's coming into your box, and uh, no doubt the forwards of Durham trying to put Loughborough under a lot of pressure there. Well, there you go. That's half time here in the Loughborough University Stadium in this Aldi Women's Championship final part of Big. Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. And going into the half time break, it's Loughborough University nil, Durham University nil. Nothing separates these two sides on the field at the moment. But Nikki, 45 minutes still separates them from finding out who's going to be running away with the silverware this evening. Uh, give me your initial thoughts, one quick sentence on how you viewed that first half. Uh, Durham, I think, uh, played better in the second half of that first half. Loughborough will be happy with how they started, but will have uh, hoped to con convert some of those chances. So, big second half coming. Well, let's take a look at some of those best moments from the first half. And this, of course, the off. This, of course, uh, one of the offside goals that Loughborough had scored. It's a lovely pass the back goes to Lauren Purchase, Nicky. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great ball across, but unfortunately just went a little bit early on the through ball. This is the uh, LMA Coons chance as well. She's been fantastic in that first half of Loughborough. They just need to give her the ball. Yeah, definitely. She seems to have a great turn of pace up front. Wants to get on the end of it. Uh, a good chance. It's the other offside goal. I don't think that's offside still, you know. Yeah, I think you'd be disappointed if that went against you. Um, again, as a striker, if you get across in front of the uh, goalkeeper, I don't think you're always inciting them. There's the close angle of it as well. Langford will be gutted, I think, with that one. She definitely would have claimed it as well, but I'm not sure if she definitely made contact. So therefore, should the offside have been awarded if she didn't make contact? Well, it depends if they think she impeded the goalkeeper enough to, to affect it. Only the officials will know that one. Oh, we're getting a bit too pedantic <laughs> now, Nikki. Let's debrief over a cup of tea away from the microphones for a second so I can get to pick your brains a little bit more. But for now, let's hear from some of our amazing partners that make events like this possible throughout the Bucks Sporting Calendar and today at Bucks Big Wednesday. You really do your research into the private equity sector. Don't be put off by this kind of mysticism that potentially lies around it. Do your research not only to help with your application and interview process, but also to see if you personally would like to work at that place or that sector or that field.
wildly different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of the store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Singleton, sniping. Paul Brown back home! Oh, Tilly Smale is on the scoreboard and Harbury University surely at this stage now. Harbury University, the Women's National League champions. Destiny Day ends with Exeter and Buck Super Rugby National Champions.
Please welcome up your teams for the second half, Lovren and Gordon!
Welcome back for the second half of this Aldi Women's National Championship final. Two unchanged sides coming into this second half from the first. We are goalless after 45 minutes, but it's fair to say we will not be goalless by the end of this game, with both sides having had plenty of chances in the opening exchanges and the opening half itself. And I'm pleased to say, Nikki, you're joining me once again for another half of scintillating football final action. What do you think the messages will have been at half time? Uh, I think both teams will be fairly confident. I think they will have taken a lot from that first half, but equally both have areas to improve. I think Durham wanting to try and keep hold of the ball a little bit more in the, in the final third, put a bit more pressure on Loughborough, try and move that back four around. Loughborough, again, trying to make the most of their chances. They've got into the box a few times, maybe just haven't quite got the numbers in there to attack the crosses. So, yeah, I think there'll be positives and uh, some constructive thoughts for both teams at half-time. Well, you can see Durham in their little huddle. Hands in the middle. One, two, three. Winners, question mark. Well, I'm sure they'll be feeling confident. They've uh, scored a lot of goals, so I'm hopeful for a few goals in this second half. Well, hey, look, six goals from their uh, from their attack in the previous two rounds to this game really do speak volumes of what they are capable of doing. Uh, but also, for Loughborough ahead of this round as well, they also managed to score six in total. It was a three-all draw after extra time against St Andrews, eventually winning that on penalties. So equally as strong an attack, you might argue. Yeah, I think everyone will be shocked. It's been 0-0 so far. So uh, hoping for a few goals in the second half. Well, the second half is underway. Let's see if we can find exactly that from this game. And there really is an early chance here for LMA Coots. But it might still fall for Loughborough. Ricocheting away from the boot of Jess Collier. Nikki, what on earth has just happened? You know what, I wasn't even quite ready then. I mean, they say to, to play straight from kickoff and try and put pressure on. That's just what Loughborough did. I think Durham will be very grateful that ball bounced out uh, for a corner there. A the, bit of a let off. Ball in from the corner for Loughborough. Oh, and that was a difficult one for Neufein to deal with. It's definitely lifted the crowd, got a bit more energy at the start of the second half, so that's good to see. I'm sure Loughborough will be happy to start with that good chance and that pressure, but would have loved to have seen it hit the back of the net. They switched their attention over very quickly from that lacrosse action on the far side <laughs> of the pitch, straight back to the football, because they saw that the home side had nearly scored, as you rightly say. And that is a, I'm not going to say a bit of a nothing pass, because it could still work out here. Check is tracking back for Loughborough. Lovelace was chasing fiercely and it hasn't worked out for Loughborough really because Lauren Purchase wasn't able to control the ball. Here's the early chance, Nicky. Oh, so it's great pressure from LMA. Put the defender under under a bit of pressure there. Oh, almost came off. I just wanted to see LMA just, just flick it over the keeper, Anna King. But that's the beauty of hindsight and a live action replay and being right at the back of the shelter. Yeah, easy for us to say, I think, up here. Um, probably didn't even expect the chance to come off so early into the second half. So, uh, yeah, Durham, Durham definitely got away with one there. Well, here's Neufein once again for Durham University. Looking for a gap in that Loughborough defensive wall. Yeah, you can see she really likes to have the ball at her feet and try and, and, try and dribble and, and put Loughborough under pressure. Does sometimes go down a little bit of an alley and, and get herself stuck, so... I know Durham will want her to be on the ball, but also move it, move it a little bit quicker potentially once she's beaten that first player. Well, that's a, a really good change of possession there, and another change of possession uh, kind of null and voids the work of Solomon Magnon. Yeah, she did really well there. Shame that uh, it turned over straight away again. Well, that's a good little clearance kick from Hannah Langford. Sometimes you need a defensive players just to step in and get rid of the ball. It doesn't matter where it goes, as long as it's off and away from danger. Yeah, definitely. You can hear the Durham, Durham captain there being quite vocal, supporting her team, trying to get them up, lifting the energy a little bit. Um, she was pleased to see that, not being afraid to put Loughborough under a bit of pressure, get them to, to clear it out for a throw-in. been interesting for Magnon once again to break away but from behind Durham's Vicky Neufeind sends it out into touch and really she's proving from the get-go here in the second half she will be just as prominent as in the first 
Yeah, definitely. She had, a, she had a positive first half, definitely looked confident, and she'll definitely want to make an impact in the second half as well. And there is Purchase on the ball. Again, another star of that first half, really. Yeah, both number 11s doing quite well out here on the Loughborough University pitch. And there is Anna King again, well off her line, letting her defence know that she's going to watch this back into her area and scoop things up. Yeah, she's kept up that high starting position, but it seems to be working. Shuts out those Loughborough long balls quite easily again. Speak about the size of the pitch, it's a long pitch. So she's able to kind of marshal that, play a bit of a sweeper role. I'm sure her centre-halves will be grateful for her doing that as well. That was a good kick downfield. Still going to work out here for Erin Nicholson. Had to really fight off the Loughborough players around her. Neufine getting the better of... Getting the better of Magnon, but didn't get the better of Czech. Yeah, again, she's getting the ball at her feet, wants to run at players, beats the first one, but maybe then needs to offload it a little bit quicker. To keep it's Durham really on the a matter of time, actually, before players like that find a way through and sometimes find their way onto the score sheet. Oh, definitely. Um, she'll probably prove me wrong in the next 10 minutes and get a banger of a goal dribbling around half the team. But yeah, definitely. I mean, every team wants those kind of players, those kind of direct players on their team. She laughed that one off. She did, didn't she? <laughs> I'm not sure I would laugh that off, but fair play to Magnon. She... <laughs> She's just brushed that off as if nothing happened, the uh, second year sport and exercise psychology student. Of course, having played out in Switzerland for a period of time, she brings a lot of a lot of knowledge to this footballing side and a breadth of knowledge. And that's a foul conceded by Shania Robber. But just going on that point of players who have played elsewhere and have other accolades to their name beyond this team. It's good to see that they can come together to form one side and really one knowledgeable base of, of, of football. Yeah, you've got players coming from all over. I mean, it's the, it's the brilliant thing about university sport that you have players from all over the country, all over the world, um, lots of different accolades, international representation across the uh, 22 players on the pitch here. So yeah, it's great to see and it really adds to the, to the box competition. Purchase's pass didn't work out there for Loughborough and that's a strong challenge in the middle of the park as well but Magnon's been able to tidy that one up. Here comes Robber again. That's great feet. Oh, that's a strong challenge from Megan Hughes going in on Jess Collier. That's a... Welcome from Hughes to Collier in this second half. Just a, hello, I'm still here. Yeah, definitely trying to set a bit of the tone for this second half, I think, with that challenge. Banyon has stepped forward to take the throw for Loughborough. It's going towards the edge of that box, but she wanted to go for the header, but she lost her footing. It's given Neufine a chance to break forward with the ball now for Durham. You can see the space over the far side. If they're able to get that switch on, it's absolutely acres over there, but uh, just can't quite get the ball out of the feet. Well, Faye Dale had it fall for her nicely. Thankfully, from a Loughborough perspective, she's dispossessed before she can find that space out on the far side with Lovelace. Yeah, it just broke down for them there, unfortunately. Is that a case of communication needs to be better from the Durham side if they want to exploit that space that's out wide in those channels? Because after all, that's where the coach said in the build-up, this is where the game's going to be won or lost. Yeah, it's definitely a bit of a communication thing, trying to get the timing right on the ball as well. If you if you take too long, the fullback's going to make the recovery and that space will be gone quite quickly. I think there it's just a case, couldn't get the ball out their feet to get their head up and to see the space. So again, any communication you can get, whether that's from your back line behind you or, or the forwards in front of you, will definitely help those midfielders to find those passes. Bit of a nervy touch there. He's uh, granting Nicholson an opportunity to bring uh, not only Lovelace but the rest of Durham back into an attacking position. I say that, they've lost the ball again. But little mistakes like that, Loughborough can't really afford to keep conceding. Yeah, again, you, you don't want to see your centre-halves making too many mistakes or giving the ball away cheaply, like we saw from Durham as well in the in the opening minute of this uh, second half. Doody linking up well with Faye Dale. 
Baydell, one of the top scorers in this Durham side, so you don't want to give her a goal scoring opportunity because she will take it. Well, that was great play from the two Durham forwards there. They, they were totally outnumbered, but, but retained possession brilliantly. I'm just admiring a lot of the flicks and skillful play from Neufeind. It, it makes her very elusive in attack, doesn't it? And it's no surprise, therefore, that she's been able to break onto the National League football stage. Yeah, definitely. It looks like a very technically good player, happy to take people on. And like I said, very tidy in terms of some of those flicks and finding her teammates in tight spaces. It's interesting to note as well that Neufeind loves cooking. So can she cook up a surprise for us here in the second half? Like Has she got there. the recipe for success? <laughs> I can't use them all now, Nikki. I'll save some of them for later. Yeah, right. I see them written down in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a foul going in from Durham on Poppy Wright. And the first yellow card of the game also. And that really is the referee has had the final straw really with the Durham attitude in their defensive effort. Yeah, I think it was uh, number four for Durham who maybe gave away that, that cheeky one, the cynical foul in the first half to stop the Loughborough attack. So I don't think she'll be too shocked with seeing the yellow card on that occasion. Well, it's out wide here now with Robber. Schneier Robber trying to get the better of Alex Gatton. And Robber's cross looks to go in, but it doesn't quite work out. But she'll muscle up against Neufine and take the ball back for Loughborough. Her team will be delighted to see that. You want to see kind of when you lose possession, the players going back and battling for it. So that'll definitely give them a lift and they're in a good position. Jess Collier now sends it along one more. And Loughborough on the edge of the area. Could do something special here. Purchase lays it back now. Is a shot from outside the box going to go in from the captain? Well, it did go in, but Greenwood's shot was blocked considerably. Yeah, because she'd taken it with her right foot a little bit earlier, gave Durham a chance to get out and get the block. But yeah, promising signs from Loughborough. I think it's fair to say a few more fans have joined us here in the Loughborough University Stadium out on that far side of the pitch. Yeah, I think they must have uh, been for their dinners in, uh, in halls or cooked up their pasta and then thought they might come out and, and check out the game. Was that your go-to student dish then, pasta? Yeah, I can't say I was very culinary skilled, um, unlike some of the Durham players apparently, um, when I was at university, so yeah, simple dishes. Well, there was a big call for a foul there, not really from the Loughborough players again, but from the fans on the far side of the pitch. The referee saw nothing wrong with it, as Czech nearly fell over the ball there controlling it, but Loughborough still in control with possession. And Manuel has to track back now for Loughborough downfield no options available this is promising that Loughborough are keeping the ball on the ground and it really might work out for them now they've only got one to beat they've lost their footing Lauren Purchase at a crucial time that was a huge goal scoring opportunity Anna King caught off guard but Purchase just couldn't make the most of the opportunity. Wow, yeah, we spoke about Anna King being quite half a line, playing that sweeper role. She got slightly caught in no man's land there, but um, managed to do enough to uh, put Lauren Purchase off. So, yeah, Lauren will be gutted with that one. We'll take another look at it now. Just look, Lauren Purchase timed that run to perfection, went to go around the keeper. I think it was the ball bouncing back up at her that she yeah. wasn't really expecting, and it threw her off. Yeah, it looks like the keeper did enough just to just to throw her off and the, the team recovered well there. But yeah, big chance for Lauren. I'm sure we'll see more of those three balls as we see a few heavier legs on this big pitch. Got some French horns here by the sounds of things as well, <laughs> Nikki. This is uh, quite the stadium atmosphere for the home side in this cup final. So the Vuvuzelas, is that what, uh, <laughs> what they are? They were banned, weren't they, from a lot of stadiums after the World Cup? Clearly not this one. Clearly not this one. Loughborough keeping the atmosphere. Well, the possession's been all about Loughborough at the beginning of this second half, and whether the blanked-out African Violet can keep that up is yet to be seen, but they're certainly going the right way about it. 
Yeah, it's really interesting seeing how Durham, kind of the, the front two, seem to be working really well together, but maybe slightly disconnected from the team. So they've done a brilliant job, like I said earlier, in keeping possession and just there applying a bit of pressure. It'll be interesting to see if Durham can get a little bit closer to them uh, and try to unlock Loughborough's defence a little bit more. should be commended is how calm Loughborough are with the ball at their feet and I say that just as there's a very hair raising moment for both Manuel and Czech but proves my point remain calm and composed with the ball at their feet and they've kind of styled that out really you would say yeah you almost jinxed them but um, no you're right again they're in the right starting position so even when the pass isn't quite right they're able to recover and, and play out from there again still finding their central midfielders feet like Greenwood, which is what they want to see. Great pass from Greenwood, changed the side of attack that they're on, and Robber coming back into the middle herself. And right this time, deciding that play needs to be switched up. Lovely through ball for Lauren Purchase to get onto, but Purchase is offside. But we've got to commend the work of first year and fresher Anna Langford. Yeah, you can start to see there how Loughborough brought it out to their right-hand side, played it back through, then Langford with her left foot was able to try and look in behind on the far left-hand side for, for Loughborough. So again, trying to maximise the switch through the midfield, through the back four, um, and see if they can release Lauren Purchase out into the, the space it's created. Well, that's a dangerous long ball for Durham, but Judy can't seem to get too involved with things it's bouncing awkwardly for right she's under significant pressure from Faye Dale and Lovelace now has it for Durham Nicholson only has one option that's playing it all the way back towards her own goal and now it's Ella May Coots's turn to put on the pressure Natalia Boardman a little bit of contention on that one I don't know if the fans influenced uh, the officials to make that decision but uh, I don't think Durham will have to do with that one I certainly wouldn't want to swap roles with the linesman right in front of those home fans. Uh, I commend the job that he's doing. He's going to be very brave to want to stand in front of those uh, <laughs> Loughborough fans for 90 minutes. Oh, definitely. He's definitely going to struggle to get some comms with uh, the fellows in the officiating team if he's got an ear full of fans. Well, here's the first change of the second half for Loughborough and leaving the field is Jess Collier. And replacing her is number 14, Zinia Delglin. Yeah, a little bit of an, uh, an attacking change there for Loughborough, so it'll be interesting to see how quickly she can get into the game. Just as I said that, she, she got forward, played a through ball, and Loughborough gained, gained a bit of ground here. I think we might have lost the ball here. We've got a faithful fan that's going out in search of it. Big up to the spectators. <laughs> well, shout out to our spectators here in the stadium, but also around the world. We have an international audience tuning in, Nikki. We've lots of people messaging you from, from far overseas. We won't name names and name countries, but lots of people tuning in, probably to listen to you, but also to tune in to this fantastic game. Oh, big chance there for Loughborough out of nowhere. I think they, they heard the international fans were on the line and wanted to put on a bit of a show then. Well, you're telling me they went to go put on a show. It's fallen with Robber now, and she's done very well in the corner. Got to see a, a cross go in now, and Poppy Wright does send one in. That's an awkward one, because right in front of Anna King were two love attackers, including Ella May Coots. Yeah, I think Charlie would have wanted to see one of his forwards get across in front of the goalkeeper there. She had quite a lot of time to to take that in. Didn't even have to receive the ball too high in the air. So I think they'll be disappointed. But again, lots of pressure from Loughborough. Lauren Purchase with, a, with another shot. Taught me a valuable lesson now, though, in those last couple of minutes. Do not take your eyes off this game <laughs> even for a second, because all of a sudden you'll miss a huge moment. And really, why would you? Because... We're in the final half an hour, and still there's nothing separating these two sides. 
And that's been deflected in the air. So another moment that Anna King might be caught off guard off her line. She's done well there really under pressure from Shania Robert. Could Robert have pressed a little bit more, put her under a bit more pressure? Well, I mean, I, I think she could have done, I would have done. She's out of a box. No goalkeeper really wants to be caught there, um, particularly on potentially a weaker foot. So, uh, yeah, I think Loughborough have an opportunity there. It's not working as well as it potentially did in the first half, that, that sweeper role for Anna King. Erin Nicholson gets her head on that to try and disrupt Loughborough. And a foul conceded by Durham's Faye Dale. Means that Loughborough have a free kick. It's very far out from the box, however, it's still dangerous because free kick is a free set piece, really, in a promising position. Yeah, definitely. It's a great opportunity to get the ball in the box, see what the Durham uh, defence is all about. Again, a bit of height coming in from the, the centre halves from Loughborough. A couple of players for Loughborough just being told, make sure you stay back. Obviously, to try and block any counter attacking effort from Durham. Yeah, Here we go. It's been sent in now. Nice and high from Abby Haightley, but Erin Nicholson again with the reliable head. And now Doody might break away with it. Yeah. But Magnon intervenes. Durham and Everon back for that one, but uh, again, they're two forwards who, who've worked really well together, came straight back out and almost managed to combine to get a counter on. But again, maybe looking a little bit disjointed, Durham. The two forwards doing well, but maybe just need to connect a little bit more with the midfield. If this game is to go to extra time, Nikki, who do you back fitness-wise to see this one out all the way? Because only, well, both sides have played extra time and only Durham have been able to seal it in extra time and not take it to penalties. Well, I think it's a tough question. I mean, all, all of these players will be exceptionally fit at this point in the season. They'll have had a lot of minutes in their legs. Um, again, they'll both both managers will make the most of their benches to get some fresh fresh legs and energy on there. Loughborough have made more changes at this point than Durham so far, I believe. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but um, it will definitely be a factor as we move into the latter stages of the game. Alex Gatt was just stretching her hamstrings there before making the throw. Cramp started creeping around this stage in the men's final earlier. I don't think we'll be surprised if we start to see it come into play here in the women's final too. That's a lovely tackle there from Neufeind to get Durham on a counter-attack. And she's taking this herself inside the Loughborough box. Lovely little bit of footwork from the number 11. But she's finally dispossessed just outside of the six-yard box. And another hair-raising moment comes to an end for Loughborough. Yeah, we've not seen Durham manage to get into that box very frequently. So it's a really great run forward. Just missing that final touch or the, the opportunity to get a shot off. Crowd are getting a bit louder though, so uh, that's always good to see. They never died down in in, uh, in volume, Nikki. Don't you worry. <laughs> They've always been here cheering Loughborough on, and many will be cheering Loughborough on from around the world and indeed Durham in this Aldi Women's Championship final, part of Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. There are a few Durham fans, I've heard a few chants for Durham, so some of them have made the journey. Well, we appreciate that because it's a very long journey to yeah. go up and, and back from Durham. Well Anna King, again, happy to see that one almost out, but just safely to her feet, really. Yeah, she'll be comfortable with that one again, back in the safety of her box as well, so she won't worry too much about those. Robber for Loughborough. Now the captain Greenwood. Ooh, and that was a nicely intended pass for Zinia Delglin. Didn't quite reach the number 14 for Loughborough. Good chance though and good vision from Loughborough to try and find her up front in a good attacking position. Yeah, definitely looking for those passes now. Ooh, and talk about good passes. They almost had Lauren Purchase on the far side on the end of a lovely through ball. And Anna King again having to scramble to put in a clearance kick. Yeah, talk Loughborough. about clearance kicks. That's a nice one from Manuel. Yeah, you see Loughborough as well there trying to get a bit more pressure on Anna King. Maybe identified trying to knock her confidence a little bit after a few balls in behind. So maybe trying to get a bit more pressure on there from Loughborough onto the goalkeeper. There you go, there's some two standouts from this second half. 
Neufeind and Magnon. They've really battled nicely against each other. The one-on-one -on -one duel has been really entertaining to watch. Yeah, definitely, definitely a standout battle from this uh, second half. Here come Loughborough again. I feel like I've not talked about a Durham attack in quite a while, but I might now because they've won the throw-in off Loughborough. Felt a little like one-way traffic for the last 10 minutes or so, Nikki. Yeah, I definitely would have felt like that. And I think Loughborough, whilst it, they're on top, will want to try and make the most of it. But Durham are weathering it quite well at the moment and looking themselves to get their two forwards in. putting pressure on Alex Gatt. So Gatt has no option but send it back to King. King's captain Brown gives it straight back to her and now it's once again back with Gatt. Alex Gatt decides she wants to give it a go, running it out. And Shania Robert puts in a really strong challenge and actually Loughborough have the throw in at the sideline. But we will take a moment to pause because Alex Gatt is down with a bit of an injury. Yeah, looks like it might be cramped, like you mentioned earlier. Starts to eke into the game. Look at me being a sporting expert, Nicky. <laughs> coming after your job. You knew it was coming. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit more in this break, actually, about your role with Sport England and the role Sport England plays in developing sport up and down the nation. How are you finding that role with them? Yeah, definitely been at Sport England now since November, uh, supporting the innovation team. Then it, it's fantastic. It's great to see a lot of the work that goes on, um, both within Sport England and all the organisation that Sport England funds to really tackle the inequalities that we see across uh, the country in terms of getting people active. So yeah, it's been it's been a great role. Really enjoying it. Um, and very fortunate to work in the sports sector. It's a dream job for many <laughs> to work in to work in sport. We yeah. are part of the lucky few that get to do it on a daily basis. And to be fair, in terms of places to go down and receive some treatment, Alex Gatt's done quite well because she's right in front of her opposition's bench. <laughs> she, might, she might just listen in a little bit, see what everyone's talking about, go back, feed it into her own team, yeah. get a little advantage. You hear about players trying to get into the huddle of the opposition. She's done very well there to be right in the, right in the thick of it. I've seen that happen many a time in Women's National League Rugby and indeed Buck Super Rugby, of which the finals are coming up on the 17th of April. Tickets available online to join us at the Stonex Stadium for that Bucks final. Of course, there has been rugby action today here at Loughborough University. Plenty more to follow throughout the rest of the academic sporting season. See uh, players getting fluids on, but also a few gels um, and things being consumed, a few sweets to get a bit of energy on board. I just love the words there from Grace Tolmy, the keeper for Loughborough. The third year just came in and was like, come on, guys, let's just keep it going. Let's keep going. That's the message coming in from the keeper. And, of course, they've got one of the best seats in the house watching it all the way from the back. Yeah, definitely a privileged position to be in uh, viewing the pitch from the keeper. So you want your keeper to be nice and vocal. And Grace has been brilliant there in terms of getting the team up and uh, trying to get them to continue this pressure on Durham. Confusion there in the backfield for Durham. I thought all of a sudden the Zinia Delblin was going to pounce on that for Loughborough because I don't know who that pass was intended to. Yeah, it's looking a bit, a little bit loose uh, in the back line for Durham there. I'm sure they'll want to sort that out quite quickly. I'm sure the captain will have a word and try and calm things down. Alex Gatt decides to send this one back in the direction of her keeper, Anna King. And King says, enough is enough. I'm going to send this down the field because Neve Doody's in a little bit of space here if we want to use it. Doody cutting back inside. She's got the support with her. Lovelace is in space on that far side if they can get it to her. And they do. But Lovelace is dispossessed by Loughborough. Really good challenges going in and led by Poppy Wright. Yeah, they've done really well there. Was it, was it Faye Doody that was it in behind? I think we've not seen too much of that from Durham getting in behind, but great kick long from Anna King. Um, um, yeah, unfortunately, Durham couldn't quite get the finishing touch to get a shot off and trouble Grace in goal. Well, here's Manuel now on the ball. Back with her captain, Greenwood. 
Well, that's a pass that Greenwood won't want to watch happen again. And Lovelace is intercepted for Durham. Here they come now. Talia Boardman out one more to New Neufein. Again with Boardman going well out wide now to Clarissa Jackson. Not said her name in a while. But here's Becky Lovelace. Lovely cut back inside. And the shot going off and sailing over the bar from Faye Dale. But promising moment for the Durham University team. Yeah, you can see a bit of a momentum shift here that, that Durham getting a little bit more of the ball. Like I said, more composure there in that final third. Haven't seen too much of the fullback getting forward for Durham, so it's good to see play that ball through and lovely little touch there in the box. Really good bit of in just individual skill there from Becky Lovelace. Played out in the USA for nine years, of course. Playing soccer at high levels across the country. And that's transferred well into footballing success here in the UK, across a small pond. We're approaching 15 minutes left here in this game between Loughborough University and Durham University. We do, of course, need to crown a winner. So if it is still goalless, the end of the regulation 90, go into extra time. And even beyond there, if you still can't find a winner, we'll have to settle with deciding the game on penalties. And Nicky, I'm sure as a player yourself, you would love for games like this not to be decided by a penalty shootout. Yeah, I think all teams are, want to try and get it get it sorted in the 90 minutes, try and get that win. Um, as a striker, I don't mind a penalty shootout, but um, again, a lot, lot comes into play with nerves, a bit of fatigue by that point. So, yeah, I think both teams would like to, like to get the winner in normal time, definitely. Aaron Brown's come forward now to take this free kick for Durham. She looks straight for Neufeind. Neufeind's cross goes in, but it hasn't got the curl to go inside that six-yard box. Instead, it goes out for a goal kick. I think that's well played by Durham there. Really nice idea from, from the captain to play it down the line and, and see if they can get a ball in. But unfortunately, the uh, delivery wasn't quite good enough there. I think you've got to praise Loughborough after the season they've had in the league. They've really risen to the occasion here in this cup final. And they're taking one heck of a game to Durham University. So fair play to them, Nicky. Yeah, definitely. I know the Loughborough didn't didn't do as well as they'd hoped in the in the league. So uh, they've definitely put all of their eggs into into this knockout competition. They'll be pleased with I think, how they've played so far in this game. But by no means am I writing off Durham University. There's a reason why they finished second in the league this year. There's a reason why they're able to beat Sterling five 0 in the build up to this final. Yeah, definitely. I think. We expected a lot of goals. It's actually ended up being a little, little bit cagey. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot more to come from both of these teams. Alex Gatch is being told off there by the linesman for wandering too far away from where the ball actually went out. Uh, I'd love to see more of that across the scope of football because <laughs> you do often find many a fan complaining about exactly that. But here comes Becky Lovelace on the ball for Durham, playing it back in field to Faye Dale. Dale just nudges that one on to Nicholson, who has found Neufeind in some space. Here comes Durham's number 11 inside the penalty area now towards that back post and Lovelace. Well, that was a dangerous moment for Durham, and had Lovelace been an extra inch in the sky, she might have connected with that, put it in the back of the net. Yeah, we said it would happen that uh, the game would start to open up as players got a bit more fatigued. You can see that here, great switch of play out to the left-hand side. Again, we said about their battle between those two, but went past her quite easily there. And oof, a bit of a half cross, half shot, I think, in the end there. Don't know if she was maybe had a half an eye on that top corner. Very close stuff. And look, that's why you shouldn't write off Durham, because when they do get a moment of brilliance in possession and a real attacking threat, they will absolutely use that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you said before, both teams have scored a lot of goals. So there's a lot of good finishes in the team. You don't want to be giving them a, a sight of goal at this point in the game. Get up, get up. Well, 
Green has managed to intercept that for Loughborough. Lauren Purchase again on the ball, but she's dispossessed. Durham now, another counter-attacking opportunity. Erin Nicholson out to Neufein. Neufein trying to cut back in towards the middle of the park, looking to see what options are there. Duty is there to support her. Back to Neufein. Looking to play that back to Need Duty. I think the ball will beat her out the end. It doesn't, so great work from the number nine. But thankfully for Loughborough, the defender is scrambling across to get that one off. Yeah, she did really well to keep that possession there and keep this pressure on for Durham. Durham have gone uh, quickly there with the throw and Loughborough have claimed it off them. LMA Cooch playing that in to Zinia Delglin. Now with Captain Greenwood. Still, Loughborough look to use that far side of the pitch with Lauren Purchase. Playing it in nicely now to Delglin. And again, on the overlap, this might work out for Loughborough with Ella May Coots. It just got away from the number nine, though. She had three Durham players around her, so even then, she stood in very well to make something out of that chance. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier, we haven't seen a huge amount of the full-backs getting beyond those forwards, but Abby Haitley there overlapped um, and was almost able to put the ball in and get a goal for Loughborough. Well, one captain to the other. Oh, and it stayed in off the corner flag from Greenwood's header. Greenwood might still keep this chance going for Loughborough. And it's gone out for a corner for Loughborough as well. So that is exactly why you always chase the ball, because <laughs> you never know when moments like that are going to happen, Nicky. Yeah, corner flag wanted to get a feature in the game, I think, there, keeping the ball in. But Doris did a great, great work there to stay live to it um, and then win the corner. So thanks to Doris Greenwood, Loughborough have a big chance now to take the lead from the corner. In it goes, nice and high ball. Anna King goes to punch this one out. But it might sit nicely on the edge of the area for check. No, it won't. Gat is attacking out, and Neve Duty was with her for the pass forward. So her strike was a bit too heavy on that occasion. Still Durham come forward, though. Neufein wanted to play it to Duty. You can see and hear the frustration. It's not worked. Yeah, Durham, it, it almost looked like Duty was going to be in there, just the right pass through, and I think it would have been a, a 1v1 with the, the remaining uh, defender from Loughborough. So, yeah, disappointing the ball didn't quite come off for her there. But again, it's really opening up. It really is opening up, and here comes Aaron Nicholson now once again. Alex Gatlin can play that down to Neufein. She had Magnon for company, and Magnon's done really well again to win that back for Lepra. And she's also frustrated that that ball's not fallen properly for her. Well, the fans have woken up again, Nikki. Yeah, get a bit. Saw a few chances, get a bit more excited. Well, we're in the final 10 minutes of the match now, of regular time in this match. Of course, if it remains goalless, we will go to extra time. But I think this is the moment where, to coin a popular phrase, both coaches will be taking the kitchen sink and throwing it out there. Yeah, definitely. It's always going to be in the back of their mind that uh, you, you maybe nick one at this stage and you're in with the chance of securing the, the result. So they'll definitely be wanting to throw everything at, at this fixture and at the remaining 10 minutes. Surprising change coming in here for Loughborough. Lauren Purchase is coming off and is going to be replaced by Ella Powell. Ex Leicester and Birmingham City, of course, Powell. So no drop in quality, but a big decision because Purchase has been brilliant on that far side. Yeah, she's played really, really well. I think she was great in the first half, great at the start of the second. Don't know if she dropped off a little bit, maybe again feeling in her legs slightly. So good opportunity, get some fresh legs on. Um, Ella Power had a long injury, was out for quite a while, but um, has done really well coming back into the team. I believe she got a goal last week, or in the last box fixture, sorry. So uh, she'll hopefully be coming in with a bit of confidence to make a mark on this game. Well, she made her Birmingham City debut at 16. Do you know who she played against at the age of 16 making her debut? No, I don't know. Manchester United. Well, that's not bad, is it? What a way to be thrown <laughs> in the deep end. And I think it's fair to say she was able to swim because she's still competing right at the top of the footballing game here in the UK. And that was a lovely run from Haightley, dispossessed by Becky Lovelace. And Durham, thanks to Lovelace's efforts, have got the ball. Yeah, it's a great challenge there. Haightley will be frustrated with that one.
Right, taking the ball off of Durham. And Loughborough have a chance to play it out from the back. This is surely the time now, Nicky, where you can try stuff that you've been practicing on the training ground and maybe you've been afraid to use all season, but now is the time to use it because it could work. Yeah, definitely. You want to throw everything at, at, at the opposition at this point. I mean, you still think no players might have that thought of extra time in the back of their minds, not wanting to lose the game. Yes, you want to win it in the final 10 minutes, but you most definitely don't want to lose it at this point in the game. So it'd be interesting to see if, if either side really goes for it or if it becomes a little bit cagey as the teams get a little bit nervous towards the end of the game. Or the end of the 90. <laughs> well, every player is going to be giving 110% no matter what in this fixture. They won't leave anything out on that pitch. They'll have given it all. That ball was looking down the field for Shania Robber, but instead it found Durham's Anna King, and now Durham again from the back once more. Seeing uh, both both teams centre halves looking for those long balls now, getting the get the ball out of their feet and not being afraid to try and put it in an area that's going to harm the opposition. But it's centre a, half to centre half at the moment. It's a <laughs> centre back's way of really trying something special, isn't it? Just just wallop the ball down the field and hope that your striker and trust your striker is going to get on the end of it. Yeah. Buffy Wright again with the ball. He's been a good playmaker for this Loughborough side in the second half especially. Robber now. Check. Loughborough starting the passing football game again. Starting the attacking football machine up once more. That's a pass that's gone loose though and it's found Aaron Brown. And we're in the final five minutes, Nicky. Yeah, again, it's gonna get to that time where a player's gonna wanna go for it or are they gonna feel a little bit nervous and like I said, not want to lose the game at this point. Um, I'm sure they'll still try to look for those passes, see if we can get a couple, one or two more chances in this final five minutes, it only takes one. Control there from Durham's Megan Hughes, and somehow Loughborough is still coming forward with it. We will play on, despite Hughes staying down with injury. Oh, and the Aaron Brown, the captain of Durham, wanted to play the ball forward and keep the game going, but instead of keeping the game going, she's hit her own teammate, and so we will stop so that Hughes can receive some treatment. Probably see both coaches, yeah bringing their teams together, trying to get some last nutrition, a bit of fluids, but also a bit of uh, information on board. See Charlie chatting to Poppy right down there in front of us. It's now where coaches start thinking about tactics for extra time, or do they only think about that when the full-time whistle goes? I think it's always going to be in the back of their mind. They would have thought about it pre-match um, in terms of what, what decisions they might make. You see Loughborough's made a, a few more changes than, than the Durham side. So again, wanting to try and bring fresh legs on earlier. Durham, are they, are they keeping a few players back? Um, it'd be really interesting to see what's going through their minds and, and how they set up and approach this last five minutes. You see Megan Hughes is down receiving some treatment on her left leg. Hopefully it's something that she can run off and she can continue to play out the rest of this fixture because these players don't want to be forced off the pitch by injury at all because you want to play all 90 of the minutes in cup final matches. Yeah, definitely. They'll want to stay on the pitch as long as possible, see if they can make their mark. Just looking down here at the touchline, the referee and the fourth official are looking at their watches and looking up at the scoreboard as well. Scoreboard says three minutes. Whether they think there's three minutes left is a whole other story. Perhaps that's what the discussion has been about. Yeah, there should, there should be a little bit of additional time based on their substitutions and a few breaks in play. be interesting to see how much they add on. Well, the referee's keen to get the sides involved again and started. And he's also just checking on Megan Hughes to make sure that she's OK. Just yeah. being that left calf by the looks of things. Hopefully it's, again, nothing too serious and that she can run it off and keep being a part of this fixture. Yeah, it looks like it might be a bit of cramp trying to trying to get it moving. Again, at the moment, Durham are a, are a player down while she's off the pitch at the moment. So, see if Loughborough can capitalise. 
They need the uh, the old pickle juice remedy to solve that cramp. But for now, they've got Becky Lovelace on the ball on the far side of the pitch for Durham. And we've got a substitution coming up potentially for Durham as well because we can see Emma Wallace warming up, England University's captain. So what an addition to bring into the match day squad. But she is going to replace Megan Hughes. So Hughes won't play any further part in this fixture. She's told me that her knees are valued at £25,000 and that's simply through the cost of the surgeries. So Nikki, I'm going to take her word for it and uh, see whether those most valuable knees make an impression on this match. Yeah, I can see. I think, I think she might have taken the captain's armband. So obviously a, a big player within this Durham team and a great person to be able to bring on at this time. We're at the end of the 90 minutes. The fourth official has indicated there will be four minutes of additional time played here. And Doris Greenwood is breaking through for Lufra oh. and selflessly played it back for her teammate Ella Powell. When the shot went in from long range from Lufra still. And that was easy for Anna Kick to sweep up. I almost wanted Greenwood to take a shot, but a classic captain, selfless to the end, wanted Powell to have the pounce. Oh, she did so well there, Doris. She she went through them. I mean, she's got fantastic feet, and uh, she showed it there. But yeah, was it the right decision? I mean, very selfless. And I think Ella was in great space, but just didn't quite come off. Well, Powell's fresh legs are paying off for Lufra because again she put Anna King under significant pressure, harassing her to spill the ball and make a mistake. I feel, feel it's lifted a little bit in the last couple of minutes since that stoppage. A bit more energy and put it into the game. Well, here comes Erin Nicholson now. Becky Lovelace in a bit of space, being ushered out there by Abby Haightley. Neve Duty trying a little one-two with Lovelace on the edge of the area, sending it in, but cleared nicely by Hannah Langford. You were clapping that, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, she did really, did really well there, Durham. It was a nice bit of play. Well, here come Loughborough University now. Elamay Coots has got some support, and she might get a chance to cross. Oh. But it's great defence from Erin Brown to see that one out for a goal kick. Oh, as a forward, you're always frustrated with those ones where they manage, the defender manages to kick it off you and get a goal kick. So you want to try and win something in those, in those situations. but. Yeah, just going back to that Durham attack, did really, really well. Not many players will, will get around Abby Haightley, but a nice little one-two. Uh, got Durham down that right-hand side. These closing minutes must always feel like the golden goal moment in school break time and lunchtime matches, because if a side were to score right now, that really is the game dead and buried and sealed for them. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of now or never to get, to get that goal if you want to try and do it in the 90 minutes. And I think you can kind of sense that. Loughborough really putting on the energy here, but well, well done there, Durham. Well, Haightley and Greenwood fiercely trying to get the ball back for Loughborough. Unfortunately, it's resulted in a Durham free kick after they concede a foul. You've got to stop them by any means uh, on that side there. Look, we've got two minutes left on our clock. Whether there's two minutes left on the referee's watch as well is yet to be seen. Durham not throwing everything at this. Anna King is still back, so they are aware that Lufra could break away with this on a counter. But here he goes, in from Erin Brown towards Lovelace, who is offside. The linesman's put his flag up. And that is the end of Durham's chance. It's not the end of this game yet, though. Still a couple of minutes left to play, as I've already said. Grace told me. Gets Loughborough's passing football game started again. Poppy Wright looks at upfield. There's a mistake there if Need Duty wants to take it. Ooh, but thankfully for Loughborough, players are back to cover. And Ella Maykutz is in a lot of space if the ball can make its way out to her. Mistake from Anna King. The clearance wasn't quite as clean as the keeper was intending. Nevertheless, Durham got out of a dangerous situation. Loughborough played out really well there. There's a little bit of pressure, but a few little one-touch passes and they were out. Ella Mae Coots has done really well, I think, in this game. Oh, this could be nice here. Shania Robber, she's in a lot of space if she wants to put a cross in, and she will towards that near post, but it's straight into the midst of Anna King. 
and we've got about 60 seconds left before we reckon the referee blows his full-time whistle. Yeah, definitely don't want to be uh, those kind of crosses. You've got to avoid the goalkeeper. It was way too comfortable there, Franny King. Robber, fiercely challenged by Emma Wallace, and Wallace trying to get Durham's attacking opportunity started, but somehow Poppy Wright's back on the ball. Really calm, essentially, there from Poppy Wright to find Greenwood. They're looking once again for Ella May Coots out on the far side, and that is the full-time whistle as Anna King scoops it up to control it. We are going to extra time here at the Loughborough University Stadium. After 90 minutes of regulation football, it remains Loughborough University nil, Durham University nil. I can see the sweets being passed around. The Haribo packet is open. Other sweets are available, of course. And the energy gels are being sapped up because it is go time. Yeah, I don't think anyone would have put put it down this fixture given the goal scoring records of the teams coming in, the bit of it being a nil-nil. But uh, here we are, quick break for the teams, and then we're back out for another half an hour. Well, let's see if we can take a look at some of the best moments from the game as a whole, as we see both sides start to get words of advice and encouragement from their coaches. Here's a lovely play from Poppy right forward to Ella May Coots. She had plenty of chances in this game, Ella May Coots, but whether she might actually pounce and, uh, and score with one is yet to be seen. Yeah, this is the, the disallowed goal goal again. Thanks for thought she got it. The first disallowed goal, Nikki. Yeah, and I know we've had two. a closer angle of it as well. I think she got a touch. I think it would have been Abby Hatley's. What is the rule around that on offside? Is it if a player is just in an offside position, it's going to be offside, even if they don't intervene or touch the ball in any way? Or do they actually have to have some sort of presence and play in what's just occurred? Definitely need to have kind of impacted the ball. So again, if the player's not, not made any attempt with the ball or impeded or interfered with any other player, then uh, they won't be deemed offside. But I think in that one, Langford probably did enough there that she impeded the goalkeeper and the officials judged her to have interfered and therefore called the offside. And that was another big moment between Ella May Coots and Jess Collier. Almost scoring between the two of them. And then this was Lauren Purchase's run. Almost going around and you can see the confidence of the keeper is, is really there screaming out onto this pitch because she's playing so far off her line, but she's playing with such confidence and conviction that Durham don't need to be worried. Yeah, she had a few nervy moments, but um, in, in the most part, she's been great and really provided that, that solidity as a sweeper for Durham and enabled them to start a little bit higher and not worry too much about the three balls. Well, it has been another really good one for Durham in this second half. There is the Durham team now getting their orders in. What do you think is happening in that circle right now, Nikki? Uh, for Durham, it looks like they're getting quite quite a lot of instruction. So again, in terms of how they're probably going to set up um, for the first 15 minutes at least of this, of this extra time period. Loughborough, a little bit more individual conversations, just trying to get fluids on board. Uh, Charlie speaking to players individually, different members of the coaching team. So slightly different approaches from both teams using this time that they've got, but all of them getting fluids on board, trying to keep the bodies ticking over. It's been a long 90 minutes so far on a big pitch. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Well, whilst we await for extra time to start, let's hear from our partners who make some of these amazing sporting events happen throughout the academic year. The benefit of having a mentor, especially so early on in our careers, is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team.
Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day to day of the store operation. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Worn off by now. Welcome back. It's extra time here at Loughborough University Stadium. We need just a few more minutes to decide who's going to be the women, winner of this Aldi Women's Championship final between Loughborough University and Durham University. Both sides showing great enthusiasm on the touchline, ready to get the rest of this game underway and dealt with quickly so that we can crown a champion. Quite apt actually that music is saying right here, right now, because this is where they leave everything. Right here, right now, in this moment, this is where you empty the tank, you give your all, especially if it's your last game for your university team. What better way to bow out of that and that squad than with a trophy lift at the end of it? Oh, there's nothing better. You want to finish your university career with a trophy and you definitely don't want to finish it having been on the losing end. So a lot of pressure on these players um, and great opportunity for the next half an hour to see if someone can get a goal, maybe clinch the winner. So there you go. Extra time we formed a two 15-minute periods. A short break between the two of them. So half an hour in total we will play. We will get to 120 minutes and hopefully by that point we'll have a winner and if not we'll have to go all the way to a penalty shootout. be interesting to see whether Durham can keep up their high press for much longer because you could imagine that the, the fuel tank and all the players out there right now will be reaching empty. Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to see how much energy they do have. Again, we spoke a lot earlier about the... We're talking about someone with energy. LMA Coots might break away. She's gone past Anna King. Just needs to send it across the face of goal and she can't. Thanks to the outstanding efforts in defence by Durham. I mean, she did really, really well there. She took around the goalkeeper. It was a tough angle. But exactly how Loughborough want to start this, this period of extra time. I believe it was... Clarissa Jackson tracking back in defence for Durham. It's a good thing she kept that fight up and put the block in. Because you think, had Ella May Coots' cross gone through, Is it a little risky taken there? the lead. A little risky there from Anna King. Could, did she get a touch? Could she have gone down? We're sending towards the near post and into the back of the net! Lover have taken the lead at the beginning of extra time with Zinia Dalglin. The corner was to perfection and all Zinya needed to do was get her head on it at the near post and it's landed in the back of the net. You see how much that means to Loughborough. I might have waited 90 minutes and not had a goal but two minutes in. Great ball in from Abby Haightley. That's a great flick. What a finish for Zinya Delblin. And what a way for Loughborough University to start this first period of extra time. It's now Loughborough University 1, Durham University 0 in this Aldi Women's Championship final, part of Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. But Durham are the ones looking to instantly respond and you don't want to concede a goal just after you've scored one of your own. Here comes Doris Greenwood from the back. Big slip there from the captain. She's taken out Vicky Neufeind in the process. Lots of players going down at the moment after those last couple of moments of play. We 
We are going to have a bit of stoppage here again, Nikki. Yeah, you can see Cramp definitely coming into play now. Again, how, how will Loughborough try and manage the tempo of this game, having gone one up? Durham will be wanting to get a lot of the ball, keep the energy high, but how will the players cope after a long game of football so far? Need to get the pickle juice on there for all the players. <laughs> Got a good friend, Rocky Clark, who always told me that's how they used to deal with it in England women's rugby matches. You'd swill some pickle juice around your mouth if you had cramp, spit it out again. And it's just magic. It would uh, completely remove all the cramp. You'd hate to do it, but it works. Lots of pleasant for everyone you're breathing on after that, I'm sure. But <laughs> <laughs> if it works. There was Inya Del Glynn, the goal scorer, getting involved, and it's now Durham's chance to attack with Robber. That's fallen back to the captain now, Greenwood. Hately on the ball. Check. Langford back to check. Loughborough won't be looking to rush anything. They've got that one goal cushion. But they can't just sit back now, can they? Yeah, it's, it's a balancing act for Loughborough. They want to try and keep on this ball, uh, try and keep possession. Durham don't have the ball, they can't score. So they'll definitely try and keep that in mind. But equally, you don't want to give away any silly mistakes or invite pressure from Durham. So it's a balancing act for Loughborough now. Well, how about that for a ball downfield from Haightley? Here comes Ella May Coots. Coots running forward with the ball now. Will she slice through the middle of the defenders? Well, she's looking for Ella Powell. And Anna King was in two minds there for a second, actually, Nikki. Yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, Ella May's done a huge amount of running in this game. And again, really putting the Durham defence under pressure. But just couldn't find that ball to, to Ella Powell. King playing that most recent playoff really calmly and coolly, just giving some orders from the backfield. Nice to see you here, everyone. <laughs> Goalkeepers uh, learn to brush things off quite quickly and move on to the next thing, I think. Good mark of the top goalkeeper, that. Here come Durham University now. Erin Nicholson plays that back to Alex Gatt, who's looking downfield for Neufein, but she will not find her. And instead, Magnon will take the throw for Loughborough. Well, Neufein's there to take the intercept. But again, Loughborough back in possession almost instantly. This is a really chaotic game, Nikki. Yeah, I think you're going to start to see it that uh, there's going to be a lot of turnover in possession. In the women's game, you do see, see that quite a lot. So there'll be a lot of transition, and it's now about how the teams can manage that will come out on top. You want to be in Loughborough's position here. One up. And uh, like we see here, they like to keep the ball. Lovely bit of play there between Greenwood and her fellow players. The captain really leading by example at the beginning of this extra time period. Interesting to that they went to that far side because on this near side here right in front of us, Ella May Coops was screaming for it. She was in acres of space, no one around her, but they just didn't move it out to her. Yeah, I think it'll be an interesting one now. You're going to play less of those risky balls, just try to find feet, build the play and play it the simple ball where you can see it. You're 1-0 up, you want to kind of look after the ball and look after that lead. So you might see less expansive football from Loughborough. There's Becky Lovelace playing it safe. But Clarissa Jackson wasn't able to safely keep a hold of possession. It's a little bit of a knock there on the ankle has Jackson, but she's going to run that off as well. Tough cookies, these players. Yeah, you've got to be a, be a bit robust to play women's football at this level. They'll be used to uh, picking up a few knocks and uh, kicks as they've gone through the game. Greenwood's cramp has really kicked in there. You can see her in a lot of pain down on the floor. And Neufeind looked to pounce on it for Durham. She still might herself. But she rude the fact that she'd missed the opportunity the first time around and didn't react to the second ball that went through. We're still playing. The clock's still ticking down. At one point there, there was three players on the floor all trying to stretch out their cramp. Is it just uh, a little bit too much for all of the players here? 
again, Loughborough are quite happy. If Durham aren't going to press them, they'll just keep the ball, try and let Doris stretch her legs out and try and get rid of some of that cramp. Which with Tommy at the back once again, Ellen May Coots has been screaming for it and clapping her hands in a lot of space on this near side. Neufein might take this for Durham, though she's intercepted the ball. First shot saved. Second attempt stopped completely, and it will be a goal kick. Yeah, it goes to show Loughborough were very calm, had the ball, looked comfortable, but a little bit of a change of pace from Durham. Got some pressure on and almost got him behind there. I'm not sure Grace has had a save to make until that point, so her concentration was called into action there. Well, this is where Neufein took the ball, just pouncing out of nowhere and put the shot away. And that's the first time we've seen a really dangerous one go in from her. Yeah, yeah she was struggling with cramp just moments before, so <laughs> did well to get get the pressure on there with Loughborough again. For Durham, it's going to be really hard. They need to take the game to Loughborough, get some pressure on, but have they got it in their legs? How can they manage the, the cramp and the energy? They just need to bring a load of those massage guns on now, don't they? Just everyone just work out their muscles, sort out those cramps. Like business idea, maybe you get them embedded into socks. Would that help? <laughs> Surely someone's thought of that. Goodness me, catch us on Dragon's Den, yeah. uh, BBC Two Monday night. Other television channels are available. <laughs> I think Clarissa Jackson was down nursing something there also. She'll take a step to the sideline just to grab a drink of water. She needs to get hydrated. As do all the players struggling with cramp. And Doris Green were desperately trying to walk this one off. But I don't know how much longer she'll be able to last out on the pitch. Yeah, I see Georgia Patterson's been sent to, sent to warm up. She'll be a, a, a like for like replacement uh, in the centre for, for Loughborough. But like I said, Doris, captain. She's not going to go off easily. Passing the ex Norwich City player will not enjoy the fact that she's playing with a lot of Ipswich Town players <laughs> or former Ipswich Town players, but she will enjoy the fact that she can contribute to the potential success of this Loughborough student side. That's a heavy touch from Greenwood again, but she did well to recover quickly because any minor slip up in these sorts of stages of the game can cost you big time. And here's Ella May Coots in a bit of space playing it in towards Ella Powell. <laughs> Becky Lovelace intervenes to stop anything dangerous happening. Yeah, see the, the tempo of the game's really dropped here. Definitely feeling the effects of, of the physical battle. It's a really good physical battle between Becky Lovelace and Zinia Del Glynn, the goal scorer. Here comes Ella May Coots in a bit of space. Lovely cut back in field. But Durham has stolen it once again with Clarissa Jackson. But now Ella May Coots has stolen it. This is brilliant work from Loughborough. Poppy Wright. But now, here comes Erin Nicholson. Neve Duty plays that on to Becky Lovelace. Sends that one on once more. Oh, <laughs> Neufein. And that's a big clattering of legs between Neufein and Langford. <laughs> Clear instruction there from the uh, Durham head coach of who he wants to take the free kick in it and swing it into the box. How much longer before we see a player like Anna King come flying out of their area to actually stick their head on the end of a ball going into the box? I feel like second half extra time you might see it lovely ball in for Durham to potentially take advantage of the captain Aaron Brown was looking towards that far post a great defense from Loughborough to deal with that yeah again spoke about it Grace has and told me in goal hasn't had a lot to do but again got that one quite comfortably and it will take her time to distribute it Tommy of course experienced on the youth international team with Scotland those experiences coming into play now for the keeper. She'd probably be quite happy that she's not had to do much over the course of these 100 plus minutes. Yeah, every keeper wants to be the hero, but equally I think you'd be quite happy for a quiet night and a win. Haightley throwing downfield. I was about to say Durham taking it back, but Loughborough intervene once more. And Aaron Brown 
intervenes again. I think Loughborough will try and want to try and get Ella Powell into the game, use her fresh legs to put a bit of pressure onto that Durham defence. Well, I'm hearing from my reliable source on the inside, on the sidelines as well, that we're looking at one minute of additional time at the end of this first 15 minute period. Loughborough certainly have their tails up, but Durham still by no means out of this competition. And Becky Lovelace is chasing this down fiercely. She's got no one to cross the ball into though. And that's an easy one for Poppy Wright to deal with. Erin Nicholson now plays it to the edge of the area and Faye Dale is back with Lovelace on this near side. She looks to send a big cross in, but slips in the process. And more players slip and slide around as Loughborough try and clear their lines. Oh, Loughborough, we love you, are the calls coming from the sidelines, Nikki. Yeah, fair, fair play to the fans, they're uh, still out in force. A fair play to the likes of Hannah Langford, who's been an absolute workhorse in defence for Loughborough. And she's still going in the 104th minute. Unreal. <laughs> There's no mean feat, especially on a, on a pitch like this and on an occasion like this. It takes a lot out of you. You, you can see that for a few players down on the pitch at the moment, just trying to Becky, get something back into their in. legs. So there's a confirmation from the fourth official. One additional minute of added time to be played at a minimum. And Haley's still trying to get rid of the pain that she's feeling from that cramp. Be interesting here because uh, Langford's had to go off because she's received treatment. Um, so one aerial defender lost for Loughborough to so see if Durham can capitalise here. Noy finds corner ball in towards that near post, easily dealt with by Loughborough. But she's got a second swing at it. And once again, another really crucial block from Zinia Del Glynn. She scored the goal that's put them into the lead. She stopped two crosses there in quick succession. Surely that's putting her hand up now for player of the match. Yeah, she's definitely got a na name down for that. Well, and there's the end of the first half of extra time. And after that first period of extra time, it is 1-0 in favour of Loughborough University. Your very quick thoughts, Nikki. I think Loughborough will be delighted. They got the goal early, so it is steadied the ship slightly. I mean, it's going to be a really disrupted second half this extra time now because a lot of players struggling out there. So who knows, but anything could happen. Well, whilst the isotonics are thrown onto the pitch for the players, we will throw ourselves also towards some isotonics because, Nikki, I think you need a rest <laughs> as well before this final period of extra time. But we'll leave you with some highlights of the best moments from the game so far. Isotonic drinks are on board, and not just from the players of the pitch. Nikki, you've had your Red Bull, you've had your black coffee, and you've also had a double espresso. So I think it's fair to say you've got the energy ready for the rest of this game. I'm absolutely buzzing. Can't wait. I can imagine. <laughs> I don't think we want to total up the amount of milligrams of caffeine you've taken in today. But we've got a substitution coming in for Loughborough as well. We've got Abby Hately coming off the park. And in her place, Georgia Patterson 
is striding in. And Loughborough will really need those fresh legs to close out the rest of this game. Yeah, definitely. A lot of experience. George has been, been at Loughborough for a while now, so she'll be pleased to get onto the pitch and try and see out this 15 minutes. I mean, brilliant shift from Abby Hately. Got up and down that right side brilliantly all game. Well, the final 15 minutes is underway. And that's a really strong challenge going in on Zinia Delglin. And it's no surprise that the Loughborough number 14 is down. I'm surprised that the referee's not had a direct word with the uh, player responsible for that challenge. I'm sure we'll take a look at it again in a second. But it's good to see that she's straight back up on her feet. She wants to be involved in this match. Fair play to her. And here come Durham attacking out from the back with Aaron Brown. Patterson intervenes. Magnon wants to take the ball, but it's fallen nicely now for Aaron Nicholson. Need duty plays that back to Emma Wallace. Wallace now. Dispossessed. And Durham sent packing back into their own half. Anna King has it at the back now. Ella Powell trying to put the pressure on for Loughborough as it falls for their captain, Aaron Brown, who's found Becky Lovelace again unmarked on that far side. But now it's with Ella May Coots. How has she still got the energy to make this sprinting run? I do not know. Here goes Ella Powell. Coots is on her own out there. And she did a lovely pass back inside, but as I say, Nikki, no one was there to receive it. Yeah, she, she's working really hard down that side, even then just there, getting back to put the pressure on. <laughs> Big collision of forces there between Alex Gatt and Doris Greenwood. And is that the final straw in the captain's game? Because that is a very heavy collision. Let's take a look at this, Nikki. Yeah, I think Doran Player was slightly off balance there, but she's gone through very heavy on Doris. It's just challenges like that, though, when you hit the floor again, the impact really knocks the wind out of you, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what it looks like, actually. Yeah, just trying to open her up there, get a bit of air into her lungs. Chance for, for Durham to potentially try and get it forward. Anna King sends this one long and high. It's gone over the head of everyone so far. Loughborough have a deflected clearance deal with Nicholson. Playing it into Aaron Brown. Faye Dale now. Lovelace again on that far side. What about the cross? Decided against it. Gat does cross the ball. Who you find was in there. Here comes Zinia Del Glynn. Then has to try and fight to get the ball back. But Durham still have it. Faye Dale now. It's on the edge of the area here for Durham. Dale again. Dispossessed by Loughborough. Ella Powell. Ella Powell taking this out to the side. Probably looking for that corner flag. The coveted <laughs> corner flag at this stage, Nicky. Yeah, she was looking for a bit of support there, but held on to it well, made the right decision. Switching the play up nicely, getting it to Shania Robber. Durham have found a little bit of energy, trying to get a bit more pressure on. Robber again coming infield, walking straight through the middle of three. Durham defenders, that pass a bit too heavy for Del Glynn to really do anything dangerous with. And instead, Anna King restarts the Durham attack. They are down a player though. North Fine struggling with, with some uh, cramp in the Yeah, no, that's. I think got in one eye where you just want it to land at your feet and, and be able to build from there, but yeah, they don't want to see their number 11 stay down for too long. She's been brilliant for Durham. Here's the captain, Doris Greenwood. 
another one who certainly put her hand up to be considered for player of the match because she's really led by example from minute one. Yeah, I think Doris has been fantastic. Fantastic all game. I think she looks like she's slotted into a full-back position with Abby Haley coming off. George Patterson bring that forward to Del Glynn. And Del Glynn is harassed off the ball by Talia Borford. Borford to Wallace. Wallace looking for something to play the ball to. Good decisions off. Wallace again using her head to try and play the ball down to a teammate. That's a strong challenge going in on knee duty. Advantage played by the officials. Another one surely again against Alex Gann. But that's also not a foul and it ends up in a throw in for Durham. Chaos once more on this pitch. Yeah, we spoke about the officials trying to play the advantage in the first half, which is great. I think it's always tough at this point in the game because how much advantage is there going to be when you've got players down and players with heavy legs. So you might have thought Durham might want the free kick there. But it's back in Grace's hands. Well, Grace told me is taking her time. We're in the final 10 minutes now of this game. Just 10 minutes until that full-time whistle blows once more, Nikki. We find out who our Bucks champions are. Bucks really should be looking to play oh with the ball at the back gosh. because exactly that sort of thing happens. And Neufein has equalised for Durham University. I mean, the celebration is slightly marred by some cramp. find is in a lot of pain there inside the six yard box for Durham University. She has got a crucial equaliser for her side. It's now one all between Loughborough and Durham. This is crazy, crazy stuff at Loughborough University Stadium. Nikki, I almost can't believe what I'm seeing because at what point did they think that this was safe? Yeah, you can see here. Doris is going to be devastated. You can see her, her teammates were consoling her and getting around her. She'll be absolutely gutted to just play the loose ball back. Um, North Arm was there to, to make the finishing touch on that. Loughborough got regrouped now. There's a lot of tired legs out there, players on their knees. But they've got to find the last bit of energy to, to see out the rest of this game and, and see if they can nick it. a few few tied passes might come into play and unfortunately that's what's undone Loughborough just there Vicky Neufein is really struggling here to, to walk off the pitch obviously we can see that that left knee is taped up quite considerably too and I really hope it's nothing to do with that pre-existing injury she will be replaced though by Esther Evans Second year general engineering student and former MK Dons regional talent program participant. So Durham throwing a little weapon into the fray here towards the closing stages. Yeah, a lot of bad players will be bringing on. I mean, they'll be gutted to lose their number 11, who's been absolutely fantastic. And again, to, to barely be able to walk but manage to, to get that ball into the back of the net, she'll be absolutely delighted. But um, yeah, a bit, bit of a change for Lockett to deal with now. Shock revelation here on the, the near side of the pitch. Vicky Neufein is actually not being replaced by the number seven, Esther Evans. Instead, goes down again on the near side of this pitch. She's getting more treatment, but she definitely has to go off because she's had treatment on the pitch. So they'll definitely need her to go off whether they're ready to make the substitution or not. She definitely could have come off here, but. I guess she's just buying her team a little bit extra time to rest. To take in some oxygen to those burning lungs. And try and close this out to a penalty shooter. Yeah. Well, there is confirmation on the substitution. Vicky Neumann. Vicky Neumann. 
there and then just ran into the player but again she's still got the energy still wants to get on the ball watching these games right now Nikki, how much does it want you how much does it make you want to go downstairs find a pair of boots lace up run out in a love for strip and just whack one in the back of the net uh, i mean uh, it, it would be great to be able to do that i'm a few years past it unfortunately in my university career but uh yeah i mean every player right now as much as it, it, they're probably in a lot of pain, they want to be on that pitch, they want to be competing. Still plenty of time for one of them to, to get that winning goal and, and be a hero for, for their university. George Patterson has somehow managed to win that ball back for Loughborough. Loughborough still have possession with the throw. Otis Bush. Matt Morrison is being prepared to come on to replace Poppy Wright, who's been struggling over the last minute or so. Here comes that substitution now. You're getting a great opportunity for Kat to come on. Experienced defender, had a long period out injured, so it's great to see her back in, back in the team after an ACL injury. So she'll be delighted to come on and hopefully steady the ship for Loughborough and potentially contribute to a winning goal they can make it in the last few minutes. Well, a huge shift from Poppy Wright in this game. It's fantastic the fact that she stopped playing for three years, took a break from football, and now, as she said to me in the Bulldogs this game, she's back. And I think she can be proud of the performance she's put in for the team. Oh, definitely. Huge performance in the centre of the park. And it came with quite the strong pass to her teammate Emma Wallace. I don't know how Durham have got away with that, but they will. And Erin Nicholson will be the one to attack out Doris Greenwood all over her though. This is uh, getting a little bit interesting with uh, about two minutes left on the clock. Yeah, it's finally decided to become a bit of an exciting game now. Don't say that now. It's been an exciting <laughs> all match, Nicky. I know. Goal, goals always liven it up. Aaron Brown now. Ready to take the free kick. That's the second. Brown sends the ball in towards the near post. But Esther Evans isn't quick enough to get to it first. And instead, it goes out for a goal kick. Grace told me. Yeah, I think she'll be a bit disappointed with that one. You want to try and at this point in the game definitely put the put the Loughborough defence under pressure. Well, here comes Emma Wallace now. George Patterson stopping her, advancing any further forward. Greenwood. Nicholson. Dispossessed by Patterson. Robert puts boot to ball. This is pinging around once again like a pinball <laughs> machine. Frantic stuff here at the Loughborough University Stadium. Good fight for the ball there between Magnon and Esther Evans. It's Magnon that comes off best. She wins her side free kick. Yeah, she's done really well. She's had a, a change of attacker to, to compete against, but did really well there. Wow, shock. There'll be four minutes of additional time to be played here at the end of extra time, a minimum of four minutes. And when you've played 120 minutes of football already, Nikki, <laughs> it seems like you've got to do another night <laughs> together. Yeah, I'm trying to work out if I'd be really pleased I've got more time to try and get a winner or devastated I've got four minutes to try and keep moving the legs with a lot of crump going on. So, yeah, four minutes for the, for the players, see what they can do. Get up, come on! 
Patterson now. Playing that one out wide. Greenwood, big challenge going in on the captain. She's straight back up though. That one won't trouble the keeper anything one bit. And you see Greenwood can barely walk earlier in the game and she's doing so well to still get everywhere on that pitch. Magnon controlling the ball well. She has an opportunity here for Loughborough. Sends a cross in. It might come off here for Doris Greenwood. That's a huge foul outside the area. Alex Gat can't believe the referee's decision. It's a yellow card for the Durham number two. Just outside the area. Loughborough have a free kick. And if there is a strong free kick taker still left in that side out on the pitch, it's a huge chance to go back into the lead. Yeah, it's a great opportunity here. Uh, again, Doris, she, she was at fault, unfortunately, for, for the Durham equaliser, so she'll have been putting everything in the last few minutes to try and make amends. Del Glynn, the goal scorer. Standing over this ball now for Loughborough. She sends it towards the goal. Oh, Ooh, a safe hat to be wow. made by Anna King. Wow. And without that from the Durham keeper, Loughborough might have sealed a winner. It's a great free kick. That's a save. Oh, wow. What a save from Anna King. And what a shot from Zinho Del Glynn. But I tell you what, it's a corner kick for Loughborough <laughs> University. Already scored from one. I'm sure they'd be keen to do it again. Simon! I can't begin to fathom what the noise and celebrations might sound like if they score from here. Robbers ball in. Dangerous in the middle. Durham still haven't really cleared their lines. Robber has another chance for a cross here. No service! A ball! Gat sends it out dead. But it's another corner for Loughborough. Another lifeline added to the home side. Yeah, they really want to make the most of this. They'd love to score now. We've got fans peeping over the fences at the back. Wanting to see how this game finishes. Robber sends the ball in towards the near post. It's bounced up and over for a goal kick. Look at our clock that's ticking over still. 123 minutes nearly played. Here's the chance. Get over, get over, Looks like kind of might have just hit Ella Powell. Not sure she knew much about that one. We've probably got just over 60 seconds left in this game to play. And Aaron Nicholson has found Becky Lovelace in a lot of space now. Here comes the Durham winger sending a cross in. Put it straight into the mitt of Grace Selmy. Less than a minute left to play. LMA Coots. And another foul from Alex Gatt. She's just had a yellow. She has got to be careful here. She's already been booked once. Here comes the second booking. And there's the red card for Alex Gatt. She will play no further part in this fixture, even if it does go to a penalty shootout. just yeah I don't know if she forgot she's on a yellow but I mean you don't want to so unnecessary way to get yourself sent off and, and finish the game in that way sure it must help that it was right in front of the Lefra faithful <laughs> yeah they enjoyed that one Manuel has that back off one more to Cat Morrison And our clock has expired beyond the four minutes of additional time. But still luck to come forward. Durham fans desperately screaming for it to be full time and for the game to finish. And 
And that's it. It's the full-time whistle here at the Loughborough University Stadium. It is one all after extra time. Loughborough pounced first. Durham equalised. And now we go to the dreaded penalty shootout to decide our Aldi Women's Championship winners. Yeah, I mean, you can see the players. Some of them probably excited for this moment. Goalkeepers love it. They've like, got a chance to be a hero. You saw Anna King with a great save at the end of that extra time period, so she'll have some high confidence. But yeah, I mean, tired legs out there. Who's going to be feeling better? I'm not sure. I think Durham will be buzzing. They got the equaliser. We'll love to be disappointed. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Well, you're hearing it announced throughout the stadium. This really is the last act of Bucks Big Wednesday 2024. But let's take a look at all of the goals that we've been able to experience finally in this game. This is the Loughborough goal, which I think you can say it covered. Oh, yeah, it's a fantastic goal. A few uh, of those corners have gone into the goalkeeper's hands, so we've got some near post this time. to Noy Fine's goal. So, one all after extra time. Penalties now to come. No break for us. No rest for the wicked. I feel like I've played a 90 minutes stood up here. Oh, come on. <laughs> Gosh, it's not been that hard. Maybe not quite. Not quite. Not <laughs> quite. Oh, good. Did it with some sweets, like uh, the players were provided, though. So maybe I've next got time. biscuits if you want biscuits. You tell me now. Do you want a biscuit <laughs> live on it? <laughs> I've also got Welsh cakes too. Big shout out to Cardiff Met. <laughs> Spending four years there in my life means that I am now addicted to them. Here is the coin toss to decide which end penalties will be taken from. Emma Wallace points to the left-hand side of your screen. I guess it's probably in the hopes that there won't be many Loughborough fans nearby, but I look over on that far side and all of the Loughborough fans are starting to emigrate over as if they are a colony of birds migrating south for the winter. <laughs> yeah, they want to get as close to the action as they can. No doubt try and put the Durham goalkeeper under a bit of pressure, take her off her, off her game. Any advantage they can get at this point, I think Loughborough would take. There you go, they are making their way over. So Faithfuls are already there with signs, adorned, ready to go. They just want to get on TV, don't they? <laughs> Everyone wants their five minutes of fame. And it will be really interesting to see in which order the players step up to take their penalty kicks. Chris Tommy is uh, striding towards the goal. I don't know whether she'll be in there first. Just look at the sheer volume <laughs> of students moving their way over to that goal. It really didn't matter what the decision of Emma Wallace was going to be. Either end she chose, that's where the Loughborough fans were going to move to. Yeah, if anything, she's just uh, giving a good view for the people who are in the gym if they're finishing their workout. Goodness me, that'd be a shocking thing to see as you finish your run on a treadmill, wouldn't it? Might be slightly off-putting seeing everyone dropping with the cramp. <laughs> well, there are many people who don't like championship games like this finishing on penalties. They'd rather it see it played out regularly. But this is ultimately how the game will be decided now. Grace Tolmy stands in goal for Loughborough. And stepping up to take the first penalty is Erin Brown. Started off the game as captain, but then as club captain, Emma Wallace came back into the fold. She added the captain's armband over. And so she will be the brave one to step forward first and try and land 
first goal for Loughborough, for Durham. I'm just so excited. So excited. I'm getting everything wrong. <laughs> Aaron Brown for Durham. Scores. And it's 1 0 Durham on penalties. That's a great penalty. She had a lot of pressure. The crowd were bashing the boards, trying to put her off. But yeah, there's a no saving that penalty. She's taken all their, a lot of their set pieces tonight and uh, made no mistake with that one. And now stepping forward for Loughborough University, Zinia Delglin. She's already got one goal in this fixture. Let's see whether she can get a second. She does, cool, calm, collected, silences the crowd. And that's what all. And now stepping up next for Durham University is Emma Wallace. The player who was introduced late on and took over the captaincy. She also decided which end the kicks will be taken from. Emma Wallace for Durham. And it's sailed over the bar. That's a big miss for Durham, but it's not game over. That's very important to remember, Nikki. Yeah, still a long way to go in this shootout. You can tell she's absolutely gutted. You're definitely in a shootout, don't want to be missing the target, and uh, unfortunately she has. It's a long walk back. Probably feels even longer after a moment like that. But here is LMA Coots for Loughborough. And Coots nets it down the middle. Great work from the Loughborough number nine. And it's 2 1 to the home side. Confident to go down the middle and high, but uh, it came off for LMA there. Let's go, Grace! Faye Dale now steps up for Durham. It's currently advantage Loughborough, but as I said, even when that kick sailed over, it's not game over. So what can Dale do here? Faye Dale scores for Durham. with the goalkeeper now, try and get her up for it. Well, that's Ella Powell now stepping up for Loughborough University. Third year sports science and management student. What can she provide? Ella Powell scores for Loughborough. 3 2 now. They are ahead at the Loughborough University Stadium. And now Clarissa Jackson begins that long walk from halfway forward to take the next Durham penalty. Still at her own time. You don't want to rush these things, especially with the cramp <laughs> that they've been experiencing in extra time. Come on, Grace! Yeah, crowd making it very difficult for those Durham players down that end. Trying to get in their heads. goes Clarissa Jackson and it sailed wide left of the post is the second big miss for Durham it means that if Loughborough score this penalty they will win the game they will take home the silverware and they will bring Bucks Big Wednesday 2024 to a close and of course it's Captain Greenwood oh, be... to take what could be the penultimate kick of the season, the final act for the Loughborough women's football side. Greenwood scores for Loughborough! Oh, she'll be absolutely delighted. She made the error to let Durham equalise. What a way to redeem herself. Loughborough University 
win 4-2 on penalties. And it's the captain, Doris Greenwood, who seals an emphatic victory for her side. And the partying can begin long into the night for Loughborough University. Commiserations to Durham, but a big congratulations for getting this far because not everyone gets to join us for Bucks Big Wednesday, Nikki. No, it's, it's an amazing day and a credit to both teams. It, like you said at the start, they've got to leave it out there. They definitely did. They barely walked by the end and uh, they gave us some brilliant excitement in that period of extra time and penalties. So, uh, yeah, commiserations to Durham, but huge, huge well done to Loughborough. Anna King being consoled not only by her own teammates, but also Durham's Kat Morrison, who's gone all the way down the other end to give her commiserations and also to say congratulations on what was a brilliantly fought contest of football. And both sides shaking hands in the middle of the park. I mean, Nikki, we've talked about how curtain raisers normally come in as a big thing to, to help get the crowd excited, but what a final act this has been for Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Bands. We couldn't have asked for anything better in terms of the drama. No, definitely not. It was a fantastic way to finish the day. It's been a long day for, for everyone here, but absolutely fantastic. And you can see what it means to Loughborough. And uh, I'm sure their night's only just started in terms of the celebrations they're going to enjoy for the rest of today. <laughs> there go the celebrations. Running off to the adoring fans that have stayed with us throughout it all. They were rewarded with a pretty good uh, last half an hour and penalty shootout, so uh, well worth staying for. I don't know where all this energy suddenly come from, but I guess that's exactly what a trophy win will do for you, even when you have nothing left to give in the tank. And the Loughborough players sprinting around, finding their friends and family. But whilst we enjoy some of these scenes of celebration, let's hear from our partners who make events like this possible throughout the academic sporting year. The benefit of having a mentor, especially so early on in our careers, is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me the perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team. responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own responsible for ordering all the stock making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi from day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operation. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role.
Singleton, sniping. Oh, Tilly Smail is on the scoreboard, and Harper University surely at this stage now. Harper University, the women's national league champions. Destiny Day ends with Exeter and Buck Super Rugby national champions. Good evening everyone, we will now begin the 2024 Watson Aldi Football Final Presentation. A big thank you to Tom's Big Wednesday Headline Partner New Balance and Brussels Football Headline Partners Aldi. But without further ado, let's move on to our team of officials. So please put your hands together for your four officials, Danny Squires, David Brent, Otis Wissandaya and Michael Gore. Next we have the player of the match award. This goes to Rockers number six, Hannah Lanthorn.
And now, uh, presenting your winners, Rupa! Your team are victorious at Bucks Big Wednesday 2024, powered by New Balance. Just how are you feeling right now? Talk me through the emotions. Well, that's a roller coaster, definitely. Uh, highs, lows. But I think one thing for sure was is that I can't fault the work ethic of, of the girls. And they've been here before, they've done it before. And I just had every confidence that they get the job done. Obviously, it doesn't do my hair or my heart well, but. <laughs> You know, well done to them. Probably not got much of uh, fing fingernails left as well after you've been biting those off in the extra time period. I mean, how did you feel actually when it got taken to extra time and then at the end it was going to be going to penalties? Like I said, um, we've been there before. We've done it. We've, we've overcome every challenge we've had this season. And I had every confidence in the group that they were going to do it. Um, they've been such a tight-knit group from, from day one. Um, and like I said earlier on in the day, they've just grown and grown and grown, and I couldn't see I couldn't see anything more than us being in that position, lifting that trophy. To be honest, you mentioned in the build-up uh, to this match as well. There's quite a young side that are out there on display representing this university. So what's next for this Loughborough women's student side? I mean, surely they won't be around the bottom end of that table for much longer. It's on to bigger and better things for you guys. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, look. Uh, my job is always just to, to give them the best opportunity to grow, develop, and um, that's what we work on every day. And we want to win, we want to do it in a certain way, but the biggest thing is we want to make sure that 
we are working on ourselves to be better every day, individually and collectively, and that's why I turn up to work every day. Uh, Nicky, is there anything you'd like to ask uh, Charlie just before we let him get back to the celebrations? I think obviously you can just see it means a lot and firstly from me congratulations absolutely fantastic result and, and delighted as Loughborough alumni as you know um, I guess just my, my last question obviously it's your first year at Loughborough um, you've obviously come in and, and taken on this Bucks team how have you found that first season and a great way to top it off and I guess is this the highlight how have you found that first year? So many Nicky uh, so many and obviously this will be right up there I think the biggest thing for me is, is that when I came in I knew that this place, these group of players that we brought in has so much potential and I'm just so excited to see what more we can do um, as they grow and develop hopefully for the next few years uh, when they're here as students and, and obviously with, with the Lightning franchise as well so I'm just really excited to see what the future holds to be honest. Brilliant. Thanks, Charlie. Charlie, go get stuck in with those celebrations. We'll leave you to it. However, if you could send Hannah Langford over, that'd be fantastic. We might not be able to grab the player of the match. She is running off. We'll leave her to enjoy the celebrations or maybe just a quick word from Hannah. Come on, Hannah, give us one quick word. We won't keep you very long. Come join our lovely sandwich. Well, we're live right now. And what, what I want to know from you, Hannah, just give me one emotion to sum up how you're feeling right now with the fact that you are not only player of the match, but also a national champion. Um, I don't even know what to say. Words can't describe it. Um, unbelievably proud of the team. Like every single one of us just put 100% in for two hours. And yeah, and every single one of the girls had to take a penalty. It's unbelievable. I'm just I'm buzzing. Well, Hannah, go enjoy the next eight hours of celebrations. Two hours of football, eight hours of celebrations. Off you go. Go enjoy it. Nikki, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, sum up this match in one word very quickly. Uh, saved it for the last minute, but I think ultimately it was exhilarating. I feel like that was about 24. But anyway, exhilarating. I take that one, Nikki. Nikki, thank you so much for joining me today for this match. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in at home for Bucks Big Wednesday 2024, powered by New Balance. That's it. The final act is done. We'll see you next year here at Loughborough, same time, same place in 2025. Goodbye. What makes Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business. And with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training, you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one, you're paired up with your mentor, who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers. You can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role.